So I would like to uh, thank everybody for coming on to the Hippie Dippy Roundtable. Uh, this is the, what is it, the 27th recorded episode, probably the 30th or 40th shit. in total. I'm excited to have a uh, colorful cast of characters like always. Uh, so before anything else, I want to cover thank some you, ground Lonnie. rules. Uh, the number one rule, of course, is not to do anything against the terms of service. I hope everybody Thanks, here is Wendell familiar Lee. enough with Twitch Make terms sure of service. Make sure that it's readable, please. Read Easy for people to policy. follow. Uh, I would also like to say that we do, even though we are uh, a platform that loves speech, we have banned a few words, and the reason why is Shit. because every time when these words are used, I'll uh, reimburse you for a sub. Uh, hurting the dialogue. So please do not call anybody Cyborg, else uh, I'll the B word, for a sub. the C word, or any slurs of any sort. Uh, for obvious reasons, because once that happens, the debate is no longer a debate about policy or issues. It is a debate about why you called me this, and it's just not good vibes all around. I will not moderate your niceness. So Thank you, Wendell you B. You're awesome. Like, well, that's stupid. I'm not going to jump in or get down your throat there. But I will ask you all politely to be uh, happy campers and little care bears for me, okay? Wonderful. We're all going to sit yeah, around the campfire and sing wait, songs. Question, mm -hmm. question. Question. Um, so when you say the B word, we're talking about... Bitch. Itch, itch with a B? Yes. Like a okay, just making sure it was no and there was no other 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 words. Yeah, no, W no. is authorized, just no B, right? <laughs> What's W? <laughs> which? 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 Oh, which? Um, oh. <laughs> I have not I have not heard that word used in that manner before. Uh, critically thinking veteran, that is definitely a critically thinking veteran Appreciate question. It, cyborg. Uh, so far that word uh, that word is not banned. <laughs> Uh, you sure do critically think. What is banned is using the word witch hunt when clearly it's not the word you actually want to use. True. Like, I, I've seen uh, that, like, thrown out, like, It looks like Cyborg has Hutch under control. We need somebody, like, for, okay, Trihex, somebody right. for Trihex, and then we need somebody for Dylan. Want, just, uh, witch hunt. no, 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 no. So, they the won't. Next rule just, just is going to be it's, that it's only in the intros, this handy Gina, dandy Just coordinate in the, in the chat, please. I almost showed my social security number on stream. I'm gonna flip that page over. So, uh, I have this handy dandy little notebook and on this notebook I write down your name if you raise your okay, hand. Cool. So let's say that there's a debate and it's like, damn, everybody's talking too much. I don't know how to get into here. Raise your hand, I'll write your name down, and I'll make sure eventually the conversation gets over to you. Uh I so please, if you do that, I understand that it's gonna make it might take a little bit of time to get over to you, but I'm gonna do my best to do so. That is to encourage productive dialogue. And this is the most important rule above all other rules. If I am talking Everyone shuts up. I'm not talking to give you my take on the minimum wage. I'm not talking to give my opinion. I'm talking simply so uh, we can get the dialogue back to being productive and we can have everybody just, you know, follow the rules. So, uh, oh, and lastly, do your best not to interrupt people too much. Uh, if it gets excessive, I will step in line. Is there any questions about Tell any of these one. rules? No, sir. No, okay. Then we're going to start with introductions. This time we're going to start in the top left-hand corner with Hutch and Trihex. Uh, uh, you should give me that finally. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll yeah figure let, me, it out. let me turn your mic off. Uh, but you got to turn on your camera. We don't see you. You don't see me? There we go. Now we, now we're... Okay. I okay. just clicked apply. There we go. Okay. Now, now we're good? Yeah, now we should be good. If everybody refreshes their right. thing, they should Hi. be able to see you now. Wonderful. So, uh, I do want to say that... Oh, where did everybody go? We refreshed. Refreshing. Oh, yeah, refreshing. Refresh. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, I told you, you to refresh. our noses, Dylan. Of course. So we're going to start with introductions in the top left-hand corner with Hutch. Uh, yeah, what's up, fellow panelists? Nice to meet you guys. Uh, my name is Hutch, and um, yeah, I got started on YouTube about 12 years ago on the Call of Duty scene and sort of switched into politics maybe about four years ago, five years ago, uh, though I've been interested in politics since I was uh, 18, 19 years old. Uh, doing a bunch of impeachment stuff this week and excited to be here on the, on the uh, panel. Thanks for the invite, Dylan. Happy to have Try. you here. Next, we're going to go over to Demon Mama. Hello, everyone. My name is Demon Mama. Um, I am a political uh, edutainer on YouTube. We do a whole bunch of debates. We do a lot of panels. We talk about a whole lot of uh, breaking news uh, stuff, and we do some variety curiosity stuff as well. Um, you've probably seen me on this panel before, but if you haven't, you can follow me over at YouTube, or you can check out my website, DemonMama.com. Uh, Dylan, thank you so very much for having me on tonight. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Spoo -spoo. I'm really happy to have you on. We just got word that Phil will not be here for 40 minutes, so we're going to be looking for a replacement. Uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, maybe he can come on in the future. Who knows? Now we're going to go over to Connor Points. Yeah, hi. My name is Connor. I run a small but quickly growing YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I am a former Marine, which is why I use the word fuck a lot, but I'll try to minimize it for the sake of this panel. 
Uh, and uh, I'm also a former, uh, former law enforcement officer of four years. I do have a four year Thank degree you, in Appreciate business, that. art and uh, history. It's an interdisciplinary degree, which basically means that I couldn't pick a degree program. Those are kind of my credentials. Um, you will see me on the panel scene. You will see me on YouTube. If you like military, law enforcement, violence, action, psychology, political debates, anything like that, then I would encourage you to subscribe. Uh, my politics are kind of center right. So I kind of get into beefs with a lot of people a lot of the time. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go over to Kay Fellows. Yeah, hey, what's up? I'm Kay Fellows. Uh, I am a political and social activist. Uh, I run, have my own YouTube channel, uh, but I'm most active on my Twitter, and I stream regularly with another content creator that's actually been on this panel, Tom Fullery. Uh, my politics are left-leaning libertarian. Uh, I do have I have a lot of different opinions that vary from left to right. Uh, I have absolutely no credentials. I'm just somebody that's very passionate about a number of topics, and I like to talk about them. So, yeah, that's me. Okay. I would like to say, Trihex and no comment check. I can actually not see you anymore. Uh, it seems uh, to be black you... screens. Okay, I'm not that. Can, can you all see me, or is it... Uh, cause I see oh, myself I bet I know. On. I bet I know. No. Can't see either of you. Hmm. I think this is just a settings deal. It's right? all good. Uh, possibly. Oh, yeah, I... I went back to my game capture. Yep, that's why. Okay. So no one sees me uh, oh, at all. Oh wait, I can mirror myself. Yes, let's mirror. Okay, there we go. There now I can see no comment, but I cannot see you, Trihex. Now, um, oh, Trihex, boy. just go into your settings, and it probably switched over to a different like camera or something. Like in my browser, my browser settings. Um, no, the settings for whereby oh. it's up in the upper right hand corner, next to hmm. the like letter of your name or whatever. Let's see. I'll just uh take that. Why it's like. Crazy. K Fellows is a right winger, I believe. Be down and out. Come back here. Yeah, Sorry K, again, K Fellows I'm is I'm a just like go off one and fix it for real, for real. I'm trying to um. And now my camera's frozen. I know, Danny. <laughs> uh, is there anybody that I did not uh, have to do the introduction yet? Perfect. I didn't. Perfect, cyborg. Oh yeah, no yeah. comment check. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm No Common Chick, and I am a super sweet mm. uwu uh, streamer that never uh, touches drama or anything like that, any of those bad vibes, any kind of bad lady saying mean things, that's not me, that's some other streamer. I don't know what people are saying, but none of it's true. I'm just a completely uh, normal and uh, very nice and uh, friendly streamer in your uh, general neighborhood vicinity. So I'm no comment chick. I uh, stream Twitch and uh, YouTube now and uh, really growing quickly on YouTube. For some reason, the algorithm really likes me, giving me a lot of views despite my small ass channel. Perfect. So I'd appreciate if you could help make that channel a little bit bigger by going over there and subscribing. But yeah, also here on Twitch, I do um, a lot of debate analysis. So, so um, streams like this one, I'll actually watch with my um, community and we'll talk about um, you know, how kind of narrative works within Thanks, that Cyborg. framework and how it's used as a rhetorical device and how we can improve our own uh, narrative, tell our own story in a way to affect uh, the change that we want to be in this world. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, um, give me a uh, follow, give me a subscribe over on YouTube um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Okay. Um, thank you uh, so much, Dylan, for having me and for having me and Dylan and uh, Demon Mama on the same panel because I feel, feel like that's kind of like a lot of firepower for one panel. I got mad respect for you for braving that. Okay, I, I wanted to ask you. Um, you're you're lagging out a lot. I you're moving like one frame every ten seconds, and uh, is is this your? Uh, are you using the correct mic? He's got a gun on. Mic. Let's check that really quick. Uh, since the camera got flipped, there's every chance that the mic got flipped. No, the mic did not get flipped. It is the correct yes. mic. Um, so learn. on the mic, let Sorry. me check. That's actually on Discord. He's got a gun. I checked on the He's got a that gun. Was my natural instinct. Um, we'll go into Dylan's. Oh my God! I've got entirely too many of these. Anyway, um, I'll solve this in the background. I think I know what might be up. Okay. I be able to so, okay, got it. Okay, so we're gonna get started because it's taking way too much time. Uh, okay, the first topic is going to be uh, we're waiting for somebody else to come and replace. Um, <laughs> KOE Phil, uh, uh, we're looking for a replacement for, for now. We're going to have to start the topic because we just ran out of time. Uh, Hutch uh, is going to probably start us off on the trans sport debate. Now, uh, this... Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm throwing sorry, it over sorry, to you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
So the transport debate, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that Tulsi Gabbard and other politicians recently have been proposing certain bills that has to do with restricting funding to schools that allow uh, trans we got uh, individuals to uh, play sports with uh, with people who Did we are... move past intros already? Well, y CTV yes. got, he got passed up. Did you get passed? Yeah. I, I said, okay. Uh, CTV is a critically thinking veteran. You can get him at twitch.tv slash critically thinking veteran he is a uh he was in, in a submarine he like destroyed like all the communism with his amazing submarine uh torpedoes okay uh we really got to keep it moving so we just got to blow, blow through this okay so the transport debate is basically uh it's on it's on the issue at the moment because of the amount of uh, bills that are being proposed to restrict funding to educational institutions that have trans individuals play sports with people who identify and play with people who, as they identify with that gender. Uh, so that is why we're talking about the transport debate. Uh, it's not something that I, I chose as a topic lately, and I know it's an emotional topic for a lot of people, so I just ask everybody to please uh, be uh, try to be kinder and understanding with this topic. And I'm going to throw it over to Hutch to start it off. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I have too much to say in the intro. I think on this topic, I'll probably do more listening than talking. But on the topic of Tulsi Gabbard, I think it's pretty telling that as soon as she, I mean, what was what were sort of the last things that she did when she was in Congress? She voted present on an impeachment vote for Donald Trump, and she proposed legislation to, uh, what was it, punish, punish schools that, that incorporate trans athletes or something like that? I'm not quite sure what it was, but... She clearly knows her audience, the Dave Rubens, the Joe Rogans, the Tim Pools, and you could foresee that coming literally like a year and a half ago. Um, on the topic at hand, I'm, I'm very um, open-minded about, uh, about uh, trans members participating in, in athletics, and I think so much of the discourse has just become so toxic uh, that it's very tricky to have this conversation, so I'm going to be very careful and pass the mic to somebody else right now. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, interestingly, this uh, topic has been researched um, pretty extensively, and um, the consensus is that there really shouldn't be any controversy over this. Um, most of what is fixated on in this conversation is, un unfortunately, um, base fear-mongering that is thrown out, um, usually anecdotal evidence of... Uh, Someone saying a trans person did this or a trans person did that, which is usually upon further investigation, not true at all. As it turns out, most sports organizations in the world have already had um, working standards in place for trans people to per, uh, to um, perform as their, uh, their chosen gender. And uh, there's not been any major issues with it. Um, this issue seems to keep coming up as a sort of boogeyman issue for a lot of conservatives specifically um, who don't really seem to actually have much care for the sports themselves, um, nor much consistency on the arguments that they're making. Um, instead, they use it as a uh, cudgel by which to propagate uh, fear and hate towards trans people. And as a result, I'm very disappointed to see that uh, politicians like Tulsi Gabbard Gabbard, uh, although I didn't, I will say I expected this sort of thing um, to be jumping on that train, especially because there is no substantive evidence that there is any need for panic or even concern. Um, the uh, the the Olympics have for well over a decade allowed trans people to um, compete as their chosen gender, and that has been perfectly fine. So yeah, wonderful. Now we're going to throw it over to No Comment Check. We cannot hear you. One one moment. Let me let me fix that. There we go. That's Say the something. Can you okay. hear me now? Yes, I can hear yes. you now. Okay, so okay, so something changed. Cool. Um, I'm glad that we got that worked out. Um, so as far as um the big scary uh trans ladies coming along to dominate the sports and take away all the awards from the the real women that are supposed to win the awards. Um, I hate to break it to you, but we're already here. We've been here, and guess what? We suck. Trans girls. We suck. We haven't won anything. We haven't won medals. We haven't dominated any fields. You know, they've got they'll focus in on like one or two athletes of, of people who transitioned when they were older and still, you know, retain some muscle mass so that it's like shocking to the public. You know, they'll they'll do that sort of thing. They'll try to give you anecdotes and stuff like that. But like Demon Mama said, 
there there's no um, actual research. Um, the research isn't conclusive, but the research that we do have doesn't yes. suggest any sort of advantage um, in sports. In fact, you can even think of some sports in which the um, the quote unquote advantages that get retained are actually disadvantages, right? Like the increased bone mass and not such a good thing if you're like a long distance runner, right? And you have to carry more weight because of that. So, you know, we think in a way about this issue, the conventional wisdom is not our friend. The conventional wisdom kind of leads us into like uh, really bad takes. And this is something that the experts like Demon Mama said have already weighed in on. And, you know, from what the evidence, the preponderance of the evidence that we have right now, there's no reason to exclude this class of people from sports. And it has real impact. I'm going to put myself on the line here. I would have been able to potentially compete pretty effectively at kickboxing had it not been for the fact that I know that entering into that either on an amateur or a professional level competitively would make me a target. Because of that, I'm only able to uh, to teach, essentially. And I mean, that's fun and I enjoy it, but, but it's taken something away from me. So let's not get um, over-invested in these abstract notions and these cerebral ideas of like, well, you know, conceivably somebody could be affected. No, people are affected and our Kitty. quality of Kitty. life are diminished because of it okay and that's because of the hate not because of the, the law the law the experts everything is on you know the side that i should be able to compete but in terms of the social experience there's been studies that trans women who participate in sports get treated you know really badly okay and, we're, um, we're gonna move on to the next person but you just want to make sure everybody has time to do the intro next is going to be trihex before we move over to the right Hey, so my you want my take on this topic, right? On trans trans uh trans yeah, athletes. Yeah, I mean you can skip if you want to. Oh no no I I I no let's 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 hop into it here. So um uh, to not make it like too long winded here. So uh, there seems to be a fixation on the fringe examples of certain certain trans athletes, typically the um the male the female entering a, a female specified spectrum of of competition and being able to like dominate. This is like not really like something that's been done in excess, but these fringe examples are the ones that are usually cited as like the the unfair advantage and and hurting the integrity of the sport. And the the problem with this argument for me is that it, it's already bound in like arbitrary bullshit in the first place. Sorry, I'm not allowed to curse on the flame or not here. Right. Um, we can bring up a particular example here. Um, Caster Semenya, am I saying, saying their name right? Um, it was a it was a female athlete who was denied the ability to um to further compete. And I believe the 2016 Olympics, or was it 20, 2018 Olympics? I don't know which one exactly here, but um, um, said female, biological female, uh, produces a uh, outside the expected spectrum of testosterone, and uh, after after passing a suspected uh, you know, uh, um, what's the word here, drug test or something like that, uh, ultimately it was like, okay, well we can't we can't prove that you have anything here, but they still ultimately declined her the ability to compete because she just had an abnormally high amount of test which ultimately gave her an advantage to be able to produce, you know, more muscle and be able to just kind of like destroy her competition, essentially. So ultimately, it's never really been about the biological uh, spectrum of, of, one's, of one's being, but instead it's more like the societal norms and confining into like the, say here, like the, the, cis, the cis assignments of like what is considered totally normal. And the idea that the, uh, that the, any kind of like transgenderism yes, is influencing that is already like, to me on the back burner of the integrity of the sport. So the whole thing goes back here to the argument being that we don't want to do it because it'll hurt the integrity of the sport. So people who argue for that purpose to me, I would I would throw them this citation instead here that there was never really it was never trans really a normal, it was just only an accepted tolerance in the first place here. Okay. So we're gonna go over to the right now and we'll have everybody do intros and then we'll have open dialogue. Again, we're trying to get a somebody to replace Phil. Hopefully we'll be able to get that soon. We're gonna start with K Fellows. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I know that I'm supposed to be representing the right here, but this is something that I very often disagree with uh, a lot of my right wing peers on. I don't see this as being this big, humongous issue that they're making it out to be. I don't think that this is an overwhelming problem, and I don't think this is a problem to the extent where we need to be passing legislation in, in Congress, in, in the federal government, to prevent something that isn't even happening yet, setting preventative measures for an issue that we're not even really seeing is an issue right now. Um, I think that the argument that because a, a transgender individual wins 
a medal or a trophy or anything um, is specifically because they're trans and they have some sort of unfair advantage. Um, I feel like that's a really, really terrible argument. And I think that it, whenever people make that argument, it really goes to show a, a disconnect and a misunderstanding between many Hell right-wing yeah, Max, individuals that's... and understanding uh, transgenderism and this topic. Um, I think that the right really does have a long way to go um, in understanding the topic of transgenderism as a whole, not just in sports. Um, and I think that I know that somebody else has said this, but I think they've made this into some sort of like boogeyman conspiracy issue that we're just not seeing any yeah, evidence yep. as it being a serious issue at this point. Yep. So I really don't understand yeah. why we're having not just it be considered such a serious issue, but to the point where we're actually having Congress people presenting legislation to prevent it from happening whenever it's not really happening. Uh, it's kind of mind blowing to me. There's so many other issues that so many other legislations that we need to see yeah, passed we're and this a lot is what this is one. being focused Don't on worry. uh my issue with this whole thing is that is that we're having so much time taken up and having this conversation that doesn't even need to be had and getting this legislation passed that doesn't need to be, be need to be passed like there's so many other things that congress needs to be doing besides attacking transgender athletes agreed okay next is going to be counterpoints yeah, so uh, Demon Mama basically brought up the standards that are used by athletic organizations in order to, um, you know, basically uh, uh, help trans folks compete on a, you know, obviously like sports is supposed to be relatively meritocratic on, on a relatively fair, or even keel. Um, I wouldn't mind having a conversation about what those standards are. So, for instance, uh, I've heard it talked about by Riley Grace Roshong, I will shout her out. Uh, that basically like what it comes down to on a competitive level is endo endocrinological, um, you know, like, like, like basically the, the testosterone levels in your body. So that, that's actually the real thing that kind of determines like the, this disparity in athletic performance. Um, so what I would like is I would like an inversion of the uh, rhetoric of the right wing for the past like five years, 2016 to 2020, where fat like facts shouldn't care about our feelings. We might feel that because we saw a trans athlete blow through, uh, you know, a track competition, or we might feel because there was a combat sports uh, trans woman who, you know, dominated that fight or whatever, we might feel that this is an unfair advantage, but we should follow the facts. And if the facts say Damn. that after two years of, uh, you know, basically hormone treatment, the endocrinological levels drop back down to that, uh, to a comparative cis level. Um, it, it, and, and on top of that, we're, we're trying to hit a moving target while we're riding a fucking bullet train. The, the studies that need to be done in order to figure out exactly what needs to be done in sports, um, it's being done right now. And we're probably not really going to have a hyper codified uh, what do we do uh, about trans athletes? Uh, we're probably not going to know the answers for another 20 or 30 years. Um, mm. So I'm happy to debate the, the finer points of this issue. Um, I don't, uh, I, I could say, oh, I just don't care. But for the sake of the conversation, I'm going to say, like, we should have a conversation about standards. We should have a conversation. If, if a trans person um, is, you know, they, they kind of finally come to the realization that they're trans, and they're 15 years old and they want to compete in a combat sport or if they want to compete in a very physical sport, then we should have a conversation about what's needed in order to allow them to compete in that sport. And obviously we're limiting it from, uh, you know, male to uh, male to female or we'll get to the correct terminology and I'll, I'll cede my time for now. OK, and we're going to go lastly to CTV. Well, <clears throat> Since I got ran over and skipped, I'll take a moment to say I'm a critically thinking veteran. I served nine years on Ohio-class submarines, right? So I got a hell of a lot of experience with a whole lot of nothing, right? But what I will say on the issue of transgenders competing in sports is that if the Olympics doesn't have any standards for uh, individuals that transfer from male to female, or transition, rather, from male to female, but they have standards, or correction. Tra standards for females that transition to male, but they don't have, uh, but they do have standards so far as testosterone levels for males that, tra that transition to female. It certainly seems that the Olympics already off the start is pointing out that there's a difference between the two, which is perfectly fine, right? I think that understanding people's differences is exactly what needs to be understood in order for this topic to be the most understood, right? Because we do have a lot of examples from a lot of different sports, i.e. cycling and running and powerlifting and a whole lot of instances where transgender individuals were able to come into this 
into women's categories and completely dominate, not just a little bit, like they dominate the sport, right? Which doesn't create or harbor a fair competitive environment when it comes to sports. Now, these things are important when it comes to sports that have been delineated along very physical types of confrontation that would happen between the people, right? So that's why we, we segregate the, the sports t- to men and then one to women when it comes to more physical altercations, right? That way... He doesn't. There's not any disparity of force, but the reality is, is that any individual, once they go through puberty, right, if they had the added benefit of going through puberty as a male, right, and they gain the the broader shoulders, the bigger muscle mass, the bigger skeletal uh, system that they have, there's already a lot of advantages that they have from Jump Street to testosterone levels. While you can bring those down, don't change the fact that you already went through puberty as a male and are now competing against women in these sports. So I feel like that the best and most fair way would be to keep the system at is, and if trans people want to compete in the sport, have them compete against other trans individuals. I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. Uh, Now I'm going to throw it over to general discussion. You may go back and forth, discuss a topic, et cetera. Yeah, basically uh, everything that CTV just said is uh, verifiably incorrect. Um, the, the idea that there is a dominance, uh, by, uh, trans women in sports is simply not true. There is no data to show that whatsoever. Um, and in fact, uh, the data that does exist shows, um, the opposite of that, that there is actually very, like, like no comment chick sort of joked about at the beginning, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of trans people, um, winning in these sports right now, um, which, would indicate that there is uh, no, you know, that would indicate that there's no statistical advantage if we've had these standards for a long time. Uh, and Wait, there's you been... mean CTV's fear mongering? Yeah, fear mongering. Uh, but no the other way. thing too is that the other thing too is that um, it, it's it's really funny because uh, first of all, a lot of this conversation, at least here in the United States, is fixated on high school um, sports. Um, which, I mean, there's a number of reasons for that. It's, there is a certain element of, well, protect the kids, um, rhetoric that's pulled upon, um, which I think is very, uh, low and disgusting. Um, but also, uh, what people don't note, what people don't note is that even, um, what, uh, biological differences do occur, um, by the end of puberty, the data that does exist, um, currently shows that those benefits are not conferred, um, pre-puberty and that they are not conferred um if puberty is halted um and so uh it seems to be that most of the quote-unquote biological advantages that come from having testosterone in your system is from having active testosterone in your system um and there really isn't much more to be said about the situation there also the standards that are put forward by most conservatives um the idea that oh we should have a special trans league which is in my opinion on its face discriminatory um but the other idea that it's like that's oh, what we do in everything is we make discriminatory you know yeah, well, you you things in order that. to put you do that. no CTV. everybody does that no, no you do that. Every you do that. Hey, man, that, that, that stop that. stop 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 okay so um, there's this thing with our ears that's really uh, magical, uh, but also extremely hurtful to us when trying to take information. When we have three people yelling at each other, we can't hear shit. So you think you'd get three times the information, but we actually get none of the information. So um, I would like to uh, hear CTV finish the statement, and then there could be a response. He interrupted me. Oh. We as human beings well, yeah, discriminate but going for a while. He's a dude. It's yeah. okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Like, can wow. I? No comment, chick. What the fuck is that? It's because really? Okay. Are you not paying attention to the okay, conversation? Okay. That's Can ridiculous. I, okay. That's utterly okay. ridiculous. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That that was that was quick. Okay. So <laughs> may I? Uh who said may I? Connor. Connor, yeah, Connor, you, you did raise raise your hand, uh, but that, that engagement didn't end, so I feel like we need to get an end okay, to it. Okay, so. let's finish the okay. engagement and I'll wait. Okay, so CTV, what you were saying uh, was that there are discriminatory decisions made when it comes to separating Everybody, people. look, every, it doesn't matter what you're doing, there's discriminations that are made, right? Because not everything is exactly the same. Whenever you walk down the street, you make discriminatory decisions about maybe you don't walk down this way, right? Or if you're participating in a sport, right? 
Matter of fact, NASCAR would be one where they make sure that all the vehicles are within certain vehicle specifications, right? In other sports, right, they make sure that males are competing against males, right? Females are competing against females, right? There's a lot of discrimination when it comes to trying to harbor an environment of fair play between individuals, right? So the idea that there's, like, supposed to be no discrimination is completely crazy, right? And the fact that you can't understand that why there should be any at all is, in fact, again, crazy to me. Right. So you're going to have to, to lay it out pretty hard for me to be able to, to like get where you're at. OK, Demon Mama. Do... Now, oh, Sorry. I just went. That was directed pretty at Demon Mama. So Demon Mama, Connor, then Hutch. We'll put in that order. Yeah, I, I wish I could. I wish I could make sense of what CTV is saying here. But honestly, it just sounds like um, fear mongering drivel. I don't even know what I'm supposed to pull out of that. The idea that, oh, like that, that somehow forcing trans people to perform in a league all of their own um, that that would not grant them a like access to the rest of the sporting world is somehow the same thing as when you choose to walk down a different road like this is nonsense this makes no i don't even know how to respond to that uh the only thing that i would say is that the standards that are usually put forward by people like ctv are um like incredibly incredibly ill-informed and also ignore the fact that ftm trans people exist aka people who are assigned female at birth and transition using testosterone to male and these people when they have uh testosterone in their bloodstream from hrt perform better because as it turns out it's all about your active almost exclusively your active testosterone levels which res which resides in your system for a little while usually is completely out of your system by about a year maybe two years at max based on the data um and people like ctv if we were to follow their prescription for it would have either trans people completely isolated to uh out of the world of sports into their own little uh separate but equal quote-unquote league um segregated or um uh, would advocate for uh, FTM individuals to be competing against cis women um, who do not have testosterone in their system to the same degree and would actually demonstrably, statistically, be able to defeat the competition because they're taking tea actively. This is just, it's just silly. This is silliness, as usual. <laughs> okay. Okay. What was that? Uh, <laughs> you literally just say the FTMs, right? They did not go through the, the, the hormonal process of puberty. They did not develop bigger, bigger skeletal frames, right? And they did not develop the muscle mass. Oh, and everything Jesus else Christ. associated with having a bigger body is somehow going to be able to come in and crush the men's competition. Did yes. you really okay. just say that? And there's evidence of it. Yes. Yes. And there's evidence of it. Oh, my God. I got to go. Okay. Wow. Can I Can I respond? The good thing about starting with this topic is you get all of it out now, and so later everyone's gonna be super chill. Okay, so we're gonna go over to Connor now uh, because I can't hear anything that anyone's saying. Okay. Connor, take us away from that. Sure. Okay. Can Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sounds okay. Good. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce a rule only for myself, and then I'm gonna go into my points. If you if I'm talking a lot, it, like talking a lot, I'm going on a fucking five minute rant, and you say the word interjection. I will say accept or decline, basically meaning that if you want to make a point while I'm making some points, I will allow you to speak so you don't have to scream over me if I make a point that you think is dumb as fuck. Okay? If you guys want to adopt that rule too, I think it would be cool. If you don't, declined. Um, no, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so basically, like, I, I'll start making my points now. Um, some sports don't even need to be on the table, okay? Some things that are coming to my mind right now are like uh, volleyball or field hockey or soccer or something like that. These are team sports. They're generally speaking not uh, contact oriented. Um, they, they don't even need to be on the fucking table because even if you have like a, 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 a what, what would you call it? A person who was assigned male at birth, but then was transitioning to being a woman. Um, if they competed in these sports, they're a part of a team. It's a team effort. It doesn't really fucking matter. They can be as athletic as they want. They still have to contribute to a team in order for that team to succeed. So, so that like some sports we can already take off the table. If pu um, so one of the things that was mentioned is if puberty is halted, there's no conferred advantage. Um, CTV, I want to make this point. People now, especially because the transgender issue is much, wi much wildly more aware in, in the, in the uh, social discourse, um, some people are transitioning before they go through a normal puberty. 
And effectively, if you look at some of these people, um, some of the assigned male at birth who transfer to women who uh, take, go on puberty blockers and then uh, uh, sex hormones, they're virtually indistinguishable from uh, from anybody else because they, they basically skip their puberty. So that's where we need to have a more nuanced conversation about what we're doing here. Um, to steal man, CTV, I promise I have one more point um, after this. To steal man CTV's... Uh, language about discrimination. He's not talking about individualistic discrimination, saying like, oh, I'm going to discriminate against a certain person. He's talking about using judgment. And I understand what he's saying with using judgment, because we do have to make a judgment. We have to make a judgment about um, endocrinological levels. We have to make a judgment about what kind of sports we don't even give a shit about. Um, we have to decide whether or not we care about uh, female to male um, folks in sports at all. And I will start, like to, to articulate why conservative, you've never seen a conservative talk about female to male at all is because basically most dudes are already, they already have a fuckload of testosterone, right? So if you take an assigned female at birth person, you start giving them a T and they kind of become buff or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan, this is a little bit of a meme, I'm a big fan of trans-inclusionary ra radical misogyny where we just accept all the trans, you know, uh, feel, uh, female to male trans folks into our big old fucking male club and then we all fucking eat hot wings and drink Bud Light. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, nobody gives a fuck about this. We can narrow the conversation down to male to female, what sports, combat sports, endocrino uh, endocrinological levels, what's, what's fair, what's appropriate. We can, we can narrow the conversation. Hutch, I think you're next. Yeah, um, so I, I just want to point out that the only reason why we're having this conversation right now is because of Obergefell versus Hodges in 2015. They lost the culture war when it came to gay marriage. There was just nowhere to go beyond that point. And so what did they do? And they moved on to the next boogeyman, uh, which is why I think what Tulsi Gabbard did was particularly odious. She doesn't give a fuck about this issue. She's just trying to get more people to sign up on her shitty Dave Rubin locals page or whatever. Um, so I just want to point out that's that is literally the only reason we're having this conversation right now. Trans athletes have been a thing for decades right now. Why has it only been in the last five years that this has become such a hot topic and it's because it's a wedge issue. It's an issue that conservatives, they know that they can serve this up to their base and it's going to get them really pissed off. None of them gave a fuck about women's sports before. And here they are all of a sudden, you know, talking about the integrity of competition within like high school volleyball games or something like that. Yeah, some would say it's a proxy issue for, um, you know, the validity of trans people, which is the, you know, the, the, the put on the table that it's, it's a proxy way of doing that without seeming like a complete asshole. Of course, that's what it is. Yes. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yep. I, I wrote a few things down, so I just want to like keep my thoughts all organized, like just to kind of segue into something else with, on the same topic here. But um, we know by now we have the data that shows us that affirming a like, and I'm talking specifically about uh, athletics when it, when it comes to kids. We know how important it is to uh, affirm a, a child's gender identity at a very young age. Uh, we can see a correlation between doing that and less rates of suicidal, suicidal ideation and suicide attempts. Uh, so on, on this topic, it just seems like such a no-brainer. Like, or do we really care so much about trying to achieve perfect fairness in sports, or are we trying to teach ki kids about uh, cultivating a sense of uh, uh, a confidence in themselves and uh, 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 learning how to, to, to be a teammate to others? Uh, these things are obviously far more important than trying to achieve this perfect fairness in sports, which is, which is inherently impossible. Uh, if you have like a six foot five kid who's 14 years old, is it inherent? Is it fair that this person is playing basketball with all the other kids who have an average height of like four foot ten or whatever? No, but we, but we shouldn't discriminate at all, then, right? Well, well, well personally, to... I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but I personally love pelting the small, the smaller kids with dodgeballs, and I think taking that experience away from me would they... be very hurtful. Of course, I don't want to take that away from anybody, but no, I'm just well, like we shouldn't discriminate at all, then, right? Well, uh, no, zero well, discrimination because, at all. Well, because because you asked is that, that the question, solution here. Well, I don't think discrimination is the word that you. I don't think that that's the word you're quite looking for here. But CTV is just trying to get a gotcha on you. There's no no substance. Don't you can right. ignore him. Well, so well, I'm glad you brought that up. I would not, gonna... I would not like to encourage the ignoring of different panel guests. Okay, that is one thing I will discourage. You can ignore Continue. that. I, okay. I, I wrote I wrote a couple other things. I wrote both. So so I, since apparently there's some kind of fucking meme going on. 
The word discrimination means the ability or power to see or make fine distinctions or discernment, right? So if you have a fucking problem with that word, that's your fucking problem. The let's word admit that it's, still let's admit means that it's what it fucking word. means, CTG, right? Let's admit that it's a loaded word. It's a loaded, mm -hmm. loaded word. Let's if just you want judgment. to have see something that's fucking loaded, then you see it as loaded, right? No, was but okay, can we can we admit that discrimination no, it is not. was okay, kind of used against like black people in the past, and maybe we could just use judgment instead of discrimination, and then they would lose this fucking meme, and they wouldn't Seems be able like to talk about that word. I well, use well, the fucking language I use according to my dialect and the way that I fucking speak, and you learn how I speak since I come I from a different part of the country. Okay, just I like everybody know. else on the fucking panel wants their were voices to be heard and respected. So instead of having this snarky fucking attitude, like, I don't know, somebody else on this fucking panel, right? How about we actually start trying to listen in good faith instead of being snarky little I don't knows, I, I right? Mean, I, okay. do think, I do think it's ironic that you're asking for us to to listen in good faith when damn near every person I've ever talked to would recognize that there's a difference between the dictionary definition of discriminate, meaning being able to distinct make distinctions between two separate things, and the colloquial version of discrimination or the legal distinction, uh, the legal term. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I join a panel that's supposed to be made up of some type of intellectuals that will be able to use the definitions of words that are actually in a, in a fucking I mean, dictionary? Aren't you kind of? Did aren't you, I, aren't you or, did I literally just show up to fucking WWE? And all I gotta do is make you look like an ass. Is that it's, is that what this is? Like okay. you're what is this? Now? An issue with your own inability to dis to discriminate what between different words. And maybe you should. Take Are you some gonna time answer to the question down. or just avoid it? You didn't ask a very good question. Are you going to answer I'm the not question going to or just it. avoid it? God damn. CCTV, okay. you don't need okay. anyone to make you look like an ass. You do a okay. fine job yourself. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, in the okay. interest of getting, oh, like, yes. back I was going on to the actually, topic... I was actually going to throw it over to Kay because you raised <laughs> okay, your hand earlier. Okay, so if we're going to discriminate based in the world of sports, like, why has it, why has the conversation boiled down to trans individuals anyway? I mean, Hutch brought up a perfect, a perfect scenario of, you know, everybody hits puberty and goes through the transition of life differently at different stages at different times. Whenever I was in high school, I regrettably, I was on the basketball team and there was this one girl, you know, 6'5", you know, just towered over all of the rest of us. And everybody used to say that she should be playing against, on the guys team, she should be playing against the guys because nobody could get around her. It was like running into a brick wall. You know, there are there are exceptions as far as all different sexes, gender identities, whether you're trans, whether you're cis, why are we making the discrimination simply based on trans individuals? Why is it that we have the divide between male and female sports? And who I... decided at what point that we were going to divide them up? Because, you know, my, my six-year-old brother plays with girls whenever he plays basketball. So at what point did we decide that we needed to make that just clear-cut divide between the sexes where trans individuals feel like they are kind of stuck in the middle and they don't have a place to engage in in sports. Yeah. I, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, you bring up a, a really good point because um, as time goes on um, and as more and more people um, choose to identify as non-binary, we have another problem, which is that the a, a binary sports system doesn't really make room for them. Um, and there is issues with this. In fact, me there have been propositions for different ways of, of um, more uh, equitably um, separating sports that actually isn't based on an arbitrary sex. Now, why we did it in the past is because we had certain understandings, certain assumptions were made, and there are broad generalizations about the, pres the presence of testosterone, which, you know, testosterone gives some musculature advantages. Um, interestingly, as it turns out, uh, the bone structure discussion, as well as the um, bone mass, um, neither of those things particular uh, seem to be particularly um, directly advantageous, except in very, very specific um, instances, which could be easily um, you know, adjusted for, but, uh, I, there has been propositions for using different systems like, for stratifying sports that doesn't involve. So just what are those instances? What, what are those mean? instances? Not the uh, you, you said, you said you that there's instances, tear. right? I'm assuming sure. that you know yeah, what you're talking yeah, about I when do, you actually. say that. So please lay out these instances. Yeah, sure. I can give you an example of that. Um, in the same way that, um, in the same way that like, uh, wrestling, for example, is split by weight class. Um, likewise, if you went through male puberty, 
um, and you uh, developed slightly larger uh, bone mass, you would have more body weight, which could impact you. It could impact the the competitivity of a sport like wrestling. However, it actually wouldn't really much uh, affect something like, um, say, swimming or rowing. Rowing has, in fact, almost no difference between cis. Uh, men and, and uh, cis women, there's almost no difference in competitive advantage, even with active testosterone. So there's a whole, believe it or not, yeah, I know this has been studied. Um, and uh, I'm sorry for frowning. No, it's fine. Um, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where um, there's actually information on this, and I know you, I wouldn't expect you, CTV, to to know any of this, um, uh, especially with how brashly you talk about these to topics, but. Um, yeah, this has been studied and yeah, there are very, very slim incidences where it could make some difference, but we already know that there are differences even among members of, of the same, uh, sex, that there are differences between, uh, some men who are like six foot four and have massive bones and smaller men. Like, I don't know. I'm just thinking right now of like, I don't know, the undertaker versus Ray Mysterio or something like men of completely different size and build who are in different weight classes. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, uh, where, uh, there's actually really simple answers to most of these questions and it gets obfuscated because of hate. And that is what it is. Can, it is about, can hate. I, can yes. I unobfuscate? Sure. Yeah, Connor, you're gonna uh, you're gonna do something, and I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, you can, see if you can call to... me after that. You know what I'm saying? I want to hop in. Yeah, here. yeah, we'll try it. Cause at any point, if you want to like hop in, or you can't hop in for whatever reason, if you can't because you don't like it's just too much, Ellie, raise your hand or write your name down. We'll get to you eventually. Okay. Um, and officially uh, raised after Connor. Okay. No worries, uh, Connor. You're good. Yeah. So okay. So cul culture war next boogeyman. Like th this is actually this is part part of what's frustrating about the conversation. I'm sorry if I'm making it about rhetoric and shit, but at the same time, like I know CTV. CTV's not a bad dude. He just has some fucking skeptical bullshit about his fucking uh, about what's going on. And this is actually the this is actually the difference difference between conservatism and traditionalism. So conservatism is giving progressives and liberals and fucking all those people shit about their fucking ideas, so we can codify their ideas, so we can make their fucking ideas better. And then if there's an idea worthy of adoption, we move society forward. However, if there's bad ideas and we give shit to those bad ideas and those bad ideas die, then those bad ideas die. That's the social function of conservatives, okay? That is different than traditionalism. Mm -hmm. And traditionalism would just be holding on to fucking traditions for the sake of fucking traditions, okay? So one of the things that you're going to have to do as pro progressive advocates, mm -hmm. as people who are pro-trans, pro-trans in sports, all that kind of stuff, is you're gonna have to communicate. You're gonna have to communicate to parents. You're gonna have to communicate to religious leaders. You're gonna have to communicate to sports leagues. Why it's acceptable for all of these memes that C CTV is saying, but are, are legitimate if you think CTV's objections to what's going on here are what parents are going to say, I promise you this is the PG fucking version of what parents are going to say about fucking high school sports. So these concerns need to be addressed, whether you like them or not. And no, I'm not going to accept your interjection. <laughs> and then, uh, so gender uh, gender confirmation as a perfect example. Hutch, you brought up uh, gender confirmation and how it basically uh, helps people, right? Um, so if you go into conservative circles, libertarian circles or whatever, the only thing that you're going to see is the Ben Shapiro fucking statistic that, uh, you know, like the single study that post-surgery uh, suicidal ideation or suicidal consideration is the same as uh, before surgery or whatever. They don't have this information. You have to communicate this information to them. And you have to say that a teenager's, uh, a teenager's evolution as an individual is, and their parents and social acceptance is incredibly important to their social well-being. That's an argument that a conservative or a libertarian can't even refute because basically they're all about social cohesion. They're all about the, you know, the social unit functioning, the family, all that kind of fucking bullshit. So telling them, hey, don't treat your trans daughter like shit uh, and maybe they won't think about suicide. That's a pretty strong and compelling argument. Uh, Demon mom, I promise I'm almost done. So Kay brought up why why does sex even matter? Uh, you know the, these uh, things are arbitrary. Oh, I used the, to play with somebody who was six foot four. Uh, what, you know, do we even need to the make these judgments again. about sports? Yes, we need to make these judgments about sports because if you just want to say, hey, we don't have to make any kind of fucking standards about what we do here, then basically people like me, I'm six foot four, I'm 210 pounds, I used to be fucking athletic before I fucking busted up my fucking back. I will fucking He's bat the fucking tobacco. ball out of your goddamn face every single time you go up Wait, for a fucking shot. We have to make judgment. I'm almost done, I promise. We have to make judgments about what we're doing with sports. And when CTD asks you, hey, what are those judgments? That shouldn't be an opportunity to call him a fucking asshole. It should be an opportunity to explain to him the better system that you are proposing. And with that, but I he, yield. 
He's not asking out of curiosity, buddy. Oh, Why are you assuming that was, that was, his intentionality? I, 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 Why listen are you to the assuming? tone of it. Listen to the tone of his voice. That it was okay. A, do you want to call him a piece of shit for the next hour, or do you want to sell your ideology? I don't think he's a piece of shit. First of all, I, I don't know how to sell my my ideology to someone like CTV. I don't really think it's my responsibility. Well, then you know, like, if you took a little bit more time to, to sit and listen, your fucking responsibility. Listen, hold on a second. To, if I can, if I can butt in here real quick, first of all, okay, one, one moment before you butt in. Trihex has been waiting patiently. Hasn't sure, said anything sure. in the whole show. Waiting, so, waiting patiently. So like, I feel like we're like we're like debating and arguing over certain points here, and I, I just want to take a second to kind of reframe like. Is the issue with the whole trans athletes being uh, being inserted into sports as we, as we know it right now with our with our general like men women divisions here? Is the issue over the integrity of the sport? Because I feel like a lot of this comes down to like the the high school iterations of certain as as Connor put it here contact oriented sports. And I'm trying to understand here. Well, is the point of high school sports more to like um, facilitate like? social engagement and maybe perhaps explore like career possibilities if you're like gifted in that situation or whatever or is it more about like pure competitive like objective fairness in the sport because i feel like a professional league would be more oriented on or more fixated on that and the high school one's probably more about just like allowing and fostering of the passion of the sport and if you want to go further in then go for a career in it I'm not, and I'm, again, I could be wrong on that, obviously, here. I just wanted to make sure that yes, we uh, – have we clarified what is our beef with the trans athletes being put in here? Is it competitive integrity and objective fairness, or is it some other shit here? And, and I'll shut up very briefly. That's beautifully said. I think people who are arguing against transgender folks in sports probably e haven't even thought about that question. So that's beautifully said, a perfect thing to consider. What are we actually objecting to? Yeah, I, I don't. To me, it sounds more like more one of the same thing, right? Because I don't want to harbor an environment in if the professional league. I would feel like that they would be better suited for for setting up, you know, whatever it is that they want to set up as far as competing in any kind of sport that they want. But at the high school level, I feel like that's where you should definitely be engaging in what would be absolute fair play, delineated along the sexes, right, male and female, and that way in that environment for the majority of the population there is the the environment of fair play and co and competition and learning what it means to win and also learning what it means to lose sometimes right because you can't win them all but whenever you know you're competing in a, whenever you're what was that for what was that for did that serve any purpose in the debate <laughs> did you just want my attention do you need to feel special is that what yeah. it is I want your attention, Apparently, Dottie. right? Can you so give more attention, that's, Dottie? Let's, let's not do. Okay, look, I see I'm how this. Gonna, we're not gonna. We're not gonna do that here. Okay, the dad. We're not. No, I, I, I've added. Okay, well, I'm adding. I'm. I, Daddy is now another banned word. Okay, I'm adding it right now. <laughs> Oop, the D bomb. Word. Yeah, no, no D bombs here. Okay, take that patriarchy. Take that. Yes, we banned the D word. Okay, God that's damn the it. D word with a hard Y is now banned. No more okay? daddies. <laughs> is, Irene ruins everything. Yep. There's there's no Love reason it. to uh, right. there's no there's no conversation to be had here with somebody as bad faith as as no comment chick has been I being know, right well, since okay. the start well, it's, it's been fine. it's been it's nothing fine. but bad faith right you've done nothing but just interject whenever there's like some semblance of a conversation happening and it involves my voice you do this right so clearly there's what? something going on Are there the I'm not game? sure what it is. But perhaps maybe you should take a look in the mirror and self-reflect a bit instead of having some kind of crush on me, right? Okay. So I can't because I've got can a I... gator in front of my face. I so literally like how okay. I, say I, I, no longer, okay. I no longer I no longer care about this engagement. Uh, so it's me over. neither. Can I? Uh, well, I, no, I'm just no. Okay, don't don't do that. Like you weren't half of that at least. Excuse least. me. Wait. What? Are you kidding? What demon? Okay, no, I don't even want to hear the comment. Okay, no, so we're gonna no, move on. Honestly, from this. I'm really interested. Please tell me okay. what I did there. I was okay. quiet for the last ten minutes. What? You just said, "Excuse me, what?" at the top of your voice. I was talking to, to no comment chick. Did I say demon mama? Or yes, did you say did no say me. Chick? Okay, then I meant no comment chick. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's easy well, to get us mixed up. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, is anybody uh, on the list now, or should we just move on to the next topic? We've been going on this for about. 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Uh, I did actually have some things that I wanted to say okay. in response to some, Connor points. We'll move on. I don't entirely disagree with some of the things that you brought up, Connor. Um, like, 
the thing is I've talked to in, in this line of work and b long before I ever streamed, I've talked to a lot of parents about trans stuff. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about it. And the fact of the matter is that it is, there are a lot of people who are just malinformed, but there's also a lot of people who are simply resistant to being informed at all or caring. Um, and it does come from a position in a lot of cases of just raw discrimination. And there's a lot of people who are pushing disinformation, uh, knowingly, in fact, people like you mentioned Ben Shapiro, um, people like Ben Shapiro and many, many others. Keep in mind that this goes all the way down the, the conservative line as far as media goes on trans issues. They're pushing like obvious disinfo. The, the, the study that you referred to specifically, um, is a John Hopkins University study that's almost 40 years old now. And it is, uh, not only was it critiqued at its time, but it has gone down in history as one of the most off-base studies about trans individuals that's ever been done. It was in an incredibly flawed study. And that's yet nonetheless pushed um, all the time uh, at a tour, you know, to, to justify this sort of uh, weird fear-mongering about trans people. And, um, again, uh, while I understand what you're trying to get at with CTV, I can't help but feel like, um, m at least for my speaking for myself, but especially also for, for Hutch and Trihex and, and even no comment chick, um, despite no comment chick getting a little more spicy with CTV than, than I have today. Um, we've all made, uh, really fact-based, um, attempts. And then there's been a focus on words like discriminate and an obvious and a very, very blatant, um, misrepresentation of the argument. When I was talking about how, um, there are better systems that we could use to, uh, to separate this, I was then questioned on, well, what are the what are the specific situations where bone density might matter uh, but which is fine and i'm more than willing to discuss that but then when it's then used as a launching point to act victimized about how i'm trying to communicate to the to the audience uh what actually where these things are important what has been studied and what hasn't been um i i can't help but feel that it is a form of obfuscation it's a time it's a way of of ro rolling down the clock so that you can spit out that I think that men and women are the only things that exist and they should just be, you know, trans people should be put in a league of their own, which to me is just very, very misinformed and also um, patently incorrect. Okay, so we're going to go into outros on this. Uh, we're going to go in the top left hand corner. We're going to go around and then Phil's going to introduce himself. And then the announcement I've been building for the last month is going to be announced before going to the next topic. So we're going to start in the top hand corner with Hutch. I've said everything. I'm good. Okay. I appreciate okay. the discourse. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Short and sweet. Beautiful. I don't. I don't know what order his order. Yeah, I, said, I, said, my I, order said K, I said K next. Okay, so America, for me, I like I just I want to kind of put out there because Connor made a great point about you know how it's easy to to get offended and get upset and then we we just start yelling at each other. Thing productive happens, but to kind of go on the flip side. Um, it, trans individuals are having to deal with just horrible hate day in and day out constantly from uh, right-leaning people and whenever we're having these conversations these extremely heated conversations I think that it's really easy to see something that's in bad faith even if it might not be in bad faith and so I think that whenever we're having these conversations it's really important to remember the the things that that trans people are, are, are have to go through the things that are said to them on a regular basis the constant uphill battle that they're having to fight just to be just for their existence to be acknowledged and accepted um, is something that everybody should really keep in mind whenever whenever we're discussing these topics. Okay, next is going to be uh, CTV. <clears throat> so I didn't hear anything that changed my mind. All I heard was a bunch of snarkiness. Right. So after all the research that I did today and all week in preparation for this topic. I uh, didn't see or anything tonight that deviated my opinion of it beforehand. I still see lots of examples where trans athletes got involved in women's sports and they completely dominated the field, right? I saw the differences you at the Olympics. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. No comment Ooh. check. Name one. No, okay. no, no comment check. I just said that's not how this works. You're going to be muted until it's your time to speak. Continue, mm. CTV. Yeah, so because this is the hippy dippy by Dylan Burns, not the no comment chick with no viewers, right? So, 
since we weren't able to get into any of that because we had somebody that would do that very example right there, there was no way that we could have any type of a genuine conversation about the topic at hand. Right. So with that being said, I wish that we would have had an opportunity to be for me to be able to bring up the examples that I went and even bothered fucking looking up. Right. Because I genuinely do care about individuals being treated fairly. And I do care about fair competition in sports. I don't want somebody that's going into it, just looking at it and go, why the fuck am I having to compete in in this? Right. We do do a lot of discriminating. That's why we create weight classes. That's why we, we create, go. you know, different back, categories everyone. for people to be able to compete in. Right. Like we literally do that. But, you know, we don't want to talk about that or the facts or anything to do with reality we want to stay locked into this echo chamber where we start yelling at people about their opinion and everything else and not trying to participate meaningfully feel i'm glad you're here now brother i'm hoping the next two hours is going to be much better right because this one right here was complete shit brother you didn't miss nothing all right uh i i still regret not being here sir yeah we're gonna throw it now over to trihex bro okay i don't even, uh, my point was i'm gonna pivot here man like it's like Com tr trans are completely dominating like you haven't said uh, one no, and then you're sitting here bragging about how you have all this research and have all this citation over all these sources here of definitive trans domination in sports and you didn't even name it in your outro i got them all bro i got them all bro like oh my god dude you're, you're killing me ctv you're killing me right now but anyways though i guess i guess because we're not responding to anything now even though, even though i did fucking whatever though um yeah, I wish we were talking more about what the system we were advocating for rather than just what we're against at this point. So if you if if we are against trans athletes in sports because there's like a again an attack on the integrity of the sport or there's like a unfair advantage or whatever the the issue was, I, I would look at it more like what is our what is our priority? What is our clear objective here? And it comes down to like if if trans youth has like an abnormally high suicide rate, then I would say like that probably to me, uh resides as like a higher priority to uh to address and that there's a societal like um lack of acceptance and i feel like having having them be helped to feel accepted is probably a higher priority to kind of just bring suicide rates down particularly here if we're if we society aren't doing all we can to help the situation in the first place so i would look at that as like the priority of what i want to address which i i, I guess kind of a boring topic because it's more about the boring like societal cultural pressure of like being trans and trying to endure the transition so that you you become who you feel accepted as and born as or whatever but that is kind of the real issue i look at here as opposed to just like the integrity of the sport that's like kind of like a, a like like Connor was saying here it's a moving target while you're on a bullet train because it's good like even then right now it's, i argue that like our our current you know, men's class, women's class situations are already incredibly antiquated and completely outdated. But that is a different topic for a different day, though. So with that, I, I conclude. Next. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to throw it over to Connor Points. Yeah, so um, basically, I, I, so I, I think Trihax brought up a really good point. Like, what are we trying to do here? And I, I think conservatives need to ask themselves that question. Are we trying to bar tra uh, transgender folk from sports? Are we trying to you know, protect uh, young girls? Are we trying to make sure that we have an even playing field? Are we trying to socialize our children, which I think should be the priority of youth sports is socializing our kids and giving them an incredible outlet with which to participate in society. Um, you know, ba basically talking about um, trans suicidality and, and like all that kind of stuff. You typically, uh, I'm sure there's probably about a bajillion studies. Most people feel less depressed, less anxious, less suicidal when they're integrated into what feels like a tribe or a group or a community. So really, like, I think those are important questions that you can kind of like, I identify as on the right, but at the same time, I am not a person who thinks that rhetoric doesn't do anything. I can be swayed on certain issues. I think these are powerful punches that you can use against conservative people who just don't want to have transgender people in sports because they have some uh, internal, you know, like they have some kind of transphobia. I think you can use this rhetoric. What are we trying to do? Is it about the integrity of the sport? Is it about social engagement? Is it about an including people? If you actually care about trans suicidality, why don't you look at the study that says that actual gender affirming care decreases suicidality? Why don't you try to improve their communitarian, uh, communitarian relationships? These are all things that you can use rhetorically to beat up on the right without calling them just like antiquated, bigoted pieces of shit. Um, so I, I yield. Okay, next I am going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Oh, I am 
You get it on the mainstream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give me my map. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Trihex, I really, really appreciate you bringing up uh, what you brought up. Um, something that I want to talk about here is uh, trans people, of which I am one, um, are excluded, targeted, and uh, and uh, hated in, in damn near every field that I can imagine right now. We are the... Uh, the hate of the month for a lot of um, conservative mouthpieces, if not the conservative party in America as a whole. And it's really fucking sad. Um, and what's worse is that these sort of issues are, are, are totally proxy wars for a larger conversation about the direction of culture in America. And, and literally young trans people are paying the price um like the, the 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 rate of trans people being kicked out of their family um dropping out of school um having suicidal ideation the depression levels are staggering and this has been studied again and again and we know what the cause is the cause is that they're treated poorly in society, that they're targeted constantly, that trans, that young trans people have to see themselves never represented in media except as the target of hateful rhetoric, of being treated like some kind of an alien that's invading spaces or that's, that's trying to take over things. It's horrible and it's really, really bad. It's gotten out of control. When I watch mainstream media, the only messaging that that I see ever, and I'm 30, year, 30 years old, I'm a trans elder at this point, but I know that the kids, the kids out there see nothing but them being characterized as aliens, as being characterized as invaders, and 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 characterized as somehow wanting to corrupt the like spirit of good sport. And honestly, it it's it's sad. It makes me sad and it's wrong. And we should be able to stand against this, especially because there's just no data. There's no data that, that says that there's any, uh, controversy to be had here. And I think that was shown on this panel. And while I understand that some people can be frustrated at, um, the implication that their views are bigoted at the same time, there's also just a, a, a capitalization on the time of these discussions sent to, People being mad about what they think they might be being implied by somebody who's just trying to argue in the favor of people being able to be included in sports that they deserve to be included in. I don't believe that a worldview that that pushes for uh, separate but equal or or further othering trans people is a good one. And I fight strongly against that trans rights and trans thriving. Okay, now no comment chick is going to have their ending statement. I will uh, say everybody Actually, that during her and uh, she her. Thanks. Yeah, no, like as well, much as everybody thinks. Wait, did I say? Go, didn't I say there? Uh, I go by she her though. You okay, used okay. there, but that's okay. Like you didn't know. Um, so as much as uh, everyone is thinking that I'm going to use this opportunity to go after CTV again, I'm going to defy your expectations here and speak to um, one of my uh, many viewers. Actually, I've got like a lot more viewers than normal. Like, yeah, um, tonight uh, they wanted to know, um, um, you know, so, um, yeah, I don't know. They they might they must love me dunking on Chuds or something. But like, you know, as far as the separate league comment, which somebody else made uh, to Demon Mama was kind of like making fun of that. She was memeing on that. Right. And the reason it's ridiculous is because we've already had separate leagues. It's a very bad part of our history. Um, you know, sports used to be segregated yeah, it does. It by does. race. You know, like there's a precedent for that. And it's an ugly um precedent but you know like for people who really love uh yeah, right, have some kind of fetish for discrimination i guess that might be appealing somehow um to force people to you know play in their uh own league for for reasons which you know i guess you didn't have time to get into tonight i'm sure there are many and uh you know demon and mama and i would love to uh hit, take them on one by one and knock them down but honestly hey, thank you uh, so CTV, much all you're thank bringing you, is Cyborg anecdote Jim. andy uh shit tonight so uh, how do you expect me to respect you after that Right, so you say you're okay. not gonna, see, you're not gonna get see, into see, me, but see, then you end it with me. Mute, uh, CTV. You know the rules. I muted. I muted. I you muted know her. The I rules muted you. And so this is, do I. Everybody's getting muted today. It's a fun. It's a fun little experiment. Uh, now, Koe, you're tough, you're tough but fair. Koe, uh, you can introduce yourself, and then I will make the announcement of what I've been working on for the last four months. doing this evening can we all hear me folks 
Yes, oh, yes, we can. Uh, I don't know hey. anything. It's weird. It is a pleasure to be here on Dylan Burns TV. Folks, what are you doing? Like, share, subscribe. Fastest growing internet community out there, and you are here at the ground floor. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, here to lend you all of my analysis to this amazing show and this amazing community. You can find me over at KOE Nation on YouTube. I do uh, different varying wow. reviews Hype of man. liquors or whatever kind of libation you can imagine. I do poetry readings on Wednesdays, all kinds of fun stuff over at the KOE Nation. You can also find me over at the Dog and Chicken Show and I'm an occasional guest star for the Tom Foolery Show and Dads Worldwide. But enough about that, uh, folks. I am just so thrilled to be here. I am glad to finally get here it's been quite a day uh whew, work held He's me drinking. up a little bit so sorry i was gonna be here a little earlier but i am here now uh, i could tell you what went wrong but it would basically just be a series of curse words and talking about why farm semis don't work under cold weather so we could just move on from that and it is just He's glorious to be here with all of you raise a glass to yourselves folks if you're out there it's friday night you should be enjoying some sort of libation and with all that being said Mr. Burns, Gamer thank fuel. you for having me this evening, sir, and I yield back the balance of my time to you. Wonderful. So now, everybody's muted because I wanna, I've want i been I've been working on this for four months. Here we go, everyone. And so, a while ago, everybody here at the Dylan Burns TV community uh, footed funds towards a secret project. I didn't give anybody any hints about what it was. I've been kept this completely under lock. A very few select people know what I've been working on. But for the last four months... Uh, I've been trying to figure out how we can change panels on Twitch because panels on Twitch are getting stale. They're all kind of the same. They're all the same kind of format. And they also are usually in isolated communities. Political Twitch doesn't really reach out outside of political Twitch. We I've try. done my best to. We try. I've tried my best to bring people from outside of political Twitch. But I found that political Twitch has a problem. And that problem is political Twitch wants Twitch to be more like politics. When I think politics, if you're doing politics on Twitch, you need to make it more like Twitch. You need to make it uh, uh, flamboyant. You need to make it, uh, you gotta give it a spice. You gotta give it a certain air to it that makes people want to pay attention, makes people actually care more, not only about the issues, but about the performative nature that Twitch is. And so for the last four months, I've been putting down, uh, different ideas on how ba -ba we can change political Twitch. And I came up with the central idea of a champion's mentality being needed going forward on political Twitch. And so what I had made is a custom, 100% custom designed, hippy dippy championship Yo! belt. This is yes! a real belt that I had custom made with the hippy dippy logo on the front, hippy dippy champion. It got different belts on the side. Right it here. got the Twitch yeah. logo. On the other side, you got the That's YouTube That's my belt, logo. baby. And what I want to make is when it comes to political That's Twitch, gonna be Twitch my generally, belt. there's one face, one name, one champion. And you know what? I think when it comes to this piece of equipment here, this is the type of spice you can add to political discussions, and political debate. Belt. And not only political debate, but debate generally. We need to reach out more. I want to see people debating uh, uh, video games. I want to see people debating music. I want to see people going through all these different communities. You see Trihex is on this. If you want to debate what's the best Smash main, you can win this belt by debating that. But there's only one face, one name. The problem with modern wrestling, the problem with modern boxing, too many titles, too many belts. You need one face and one name. And that's what this is going to represent. And so, we have a certain match set up to win the first title. And we're about to announce who's going to be going head-to-head -head for this. Two people diametrically opposed on fundamental issues. Somebody who's had a few problems with Twitch in the past, too. But we have created a custom ranking system to figure out who will be able to challenge for the belt. We have designed special tournaments to see who will challenge for the belt. We have designed uh, battle royales, Royal Rumble style system situations. We're also this, going to, we're in the middle v of making fellow? tag team Bausch? championship belts. Bausch? So tag teams can pair together with custom themes and challenge each other. But on to the announcement. Now, everybody who's in the channel right now listening to me is not going to hear the announcement because it's going to be playing some footage on stream quick. So I'm going to play that quickly. Uh, it's a quick announcement, and I think everybody will get straight to the point. Here we Let's go. play that footage real quick. Here. Let's play it. Stupid ads.
So, as you can see, it's going to be Vosh versus Bastiat, an oil so, lawyer see, versus uh, YouTube and Twitch's most popular socialist going head to head oh. on fundamental issues. Two people more, no more diametrically opposed could you possibly find on the platform. This is what I've been working on for the last four, ma for four months. We're going to have one face, one name, Hype. and hopefully with this we can bring Hype. some innovation to debate panels and panels generally, and make a bridge between political Twitch, which is quite isolated, to the rest of Twitch. Get more gamers on, get more uh, get more IRL streamers on, get more people outside of political Hell Twitch. Hell yes, into political I Twitch love it. To start that dialogue. I want to see not only people debating politics for this belt, I want to see people debating games and other topics. So this is what I've been working on for the last four months. That is scheduled. For January 26th at 10 p.m. after an undercard tag team February. match, which we're still making. February. Uh, next week, we're going to be testing this new format Bab. out, and I'm excited to. You will now Bab. all be unmuted. Uh, thank you all. I've been playing this for four months, and thank you for your patience. I'll meet you all. Beautifully done. 2022? Don't have one yet. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's January, t uh, uh, February 26th. Sorry. Sorry, not 2022. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, February. I'll get it's one. a January. <laughs> In there, Wonder, I gotta get a in? jumbotron. Yeah. Yep. I think it. I think it's a decent idea. Fuck yeah. It's it's tw it's twenty twenty one. Yeah, I'd have the video in advance. It, so you're 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 doing like a pod. Like I'm sorry, a debate battle royale for the belt. Is that? Well, we're we're having a one v one with between Bosch and Bastiat for the belt originally, and then mm -hmm. we're gonna have a battle royale to see who challenges that person, the new champion. We're we're built. We're building up. Oh, ways. okay. Do we, okay. Okay. Do yeah. we get? Oh, do we get the physical Good. belt? If yes, we you win. get the physical belt. We sent it. Okay. Dylan, All right. I must <laughs> Ooh, say, hell in a cell, baby. I am I, I want that quite, belt. Like, as one of the co-stars to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast and a seven-time Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast champion myself and the only ever KOE champion of the KOE Nation, I must say, sir, that is one of the most spectacular ideas I have ever heard. Podcast championship. Now, I mean, gosh, I mean, I, I just got here and met all you wonderful people and you've already given me something to strive for. Oh, isn't life amazing? But yeah, since I'm... You know, the, the king of extreme, the seven-time champion, and the KOE champion. He uh, has like 50 Dylan, followers. Reminisce. Amazing, amazing idea. But he seems there, high sir. energy. I so. cannot wait to see the matchups that are coming his, and who will be crowned the first ever Hippie Dippy yeah. Podcast it's Champion. Vosh versus Bastia, look out for it. We're going to have them shooting promos. We're going to have uh, pre- and post-fight interviews. We're having mm. the whole shebang. We even have hired a ring announcer to help do commentary over certain things. So we are, uh, we're, doing, we're doing the whole shebang. That's awesome. Have, have you told us yet what will they debate? Yeah, or Herman, he doesn't topic... have the control um, the, that I, I have. It's TB, TBA, but the most likely it's going to be socialism versus capitalism. Got to start on the basics. Oh, we're gonna boy. The, mm -hmm. Start with the basics and then... From there, I mean, I wanted to eventually get over to every single cycle of Twitch. I eventually want this to go over to gaming awesome. Twitch. I want this to be something that goes through all the different communities. I want this to be something that uh, that helps build a bridge between political Twitch and the rest of Twitch. Hell Yo, yeah. I want a front row seat, man. I'm, I'm getting, getting my biggest bag of popcorn. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. You're going to be like one of those, um, you know, in boxing it. matches that go into the crowd. It's like, so that's uh, the third division <laughs> champion who's been wanting to uh, fight. Is, is, you're in, it's all right, you're Vermin. The competition, you know what I mean? It's all right. I want mm -hmm. a fucking belt, dude. <laughs> Everybody, I think you can do it. a beautiful piece of equipment. Who wouldn't? So, you can wear so, this, by the way. This is a real belt. You can wear this. Yep. Dylan, I have, I have one more question for Undisputed you. Actually. Belts? Undisputed, yes. Yes. That's where we uh, got the RWP title. Oh, go so, ahead. So, I'm sorry, sir. May I ask one more thing here, Dylan? Yes, uh, sure. So here's the other thing I have for you. Like, okay, so I understand here that like anyone can like get the belt. They can chase after it after like the mm -hmm. person wins the initial bout. My question is, how how would you determine who? Because like I feel like you're gonna get a lot this, of people who want to act. This you. is the this is the problem. I think you're about uh, who. How do you determine who wins? Right. You know, how do you determine who gets the challenge to win? Oh, we have a whole rating system. Uh, we ranking oh. system we've custom designed to basically oh. you can check a list if you want to enter your name yes, in. Yes, we'll I put you on the list, and by having other debates with other people. If you want to submit it to us for review, Vosh that Red. can move you Vosh up the list. Red. Oh, okay. So this is a, re a real functional ranking system showing that anyone can hold this belt if they work hard enough. What you gonna do? Obviously, the people with clout when can Vosh get the bigger debates to more attention, you. moves them up higher. But you know, we well, this is America, baby. I believe in the American dream. So anybody can really get this. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a, I, I, I love, I mean, I love Dusty Rhodes. So I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of the American dream. We can do it, man. What's oh, the uh, Rose, what, baby? Great American yet, bash, baby. You cannot wait to see it. Oh, God, Dusty, sorry. <laughs> yes. What's so, the, 
Mm-hmm. What's the Samuel L. Jackson uh like uh samurai what what was it? Where he like Afro only, Samurai like no, well yeah, Afro Samurai, where only number two can challenge number one. <laughs> <laughs> and so the uh way we're going to find out who wins Ooh, is depend we're gonna cool make sure cyborg. that yeah, whatever the topic is debated, week. we try to get people from that I'm community that to week, be the judges. Worry. So if this is a video game debate, we're getting people from video game Twitch to be the judges. And we're gonna have a certain amount of judges. Twitch will, of course, uh, Twitch chat will be able to, of course, vote. But, of course, I always get final say. If I think a decision was completely whack, I can jump in and say, not nah, it doesn't make sense. But usually I will not exercise that power. So any questions anybody else would like to ask me about this belt before we go into the last uh, next topic? No, nah, it's fucking based. Wonderful. No, it's tight, dude. Rock and it's roll. Good. Congratulations. Thank you very, very, very much. I want much. that belt. I want that well, belt. Well, got to work for it. Yeah, that belt. Okay. Belt rip I'm the AF, hardest dude. working woman on Twitch. <laughs> So we're going to go into the next topic, which is federal gun control. Since the Democrats right. have taken over the, uh, you know, it's another uh, soft topic. Uh, since the Democrats have taken back over, there's been talk of gun uh, control legislation being passed. And there have been certain bills uh, proposed on the state and national level. So uh, the question comes out. Do we want gun control? Do we not want gun control? But Here guns go. pretty cool. They go bang, bang. Hutch wants to dip. Oh, no. Uh, so we're going to start in the top left-hand corner, as always, with Hutch. Yeah, so unfortunately, like, so much of the gun control debate, I feel like, uh, gets sidetracked with, uh, you know, clips versus magazines, that sort of thing. Um, like, what does is, what is AR-15 stand for instead of uh, the issue that we're actually trying to address? Unfortunately, I think that gun culture is so deeply ingrained in this country that it's really, really difficult to untangle uh, the culture from from that sort of historical context. Uh, I think that there is a broad content. Well, I know there's a broad consensus uh, among the American uh, voter base that um, th- things like expanded background checks are exceedingly popular. I think uh, something like over 90% of the country thinks that we should have stricter measures when it comes to determining who gets a gun. Things like closing gun show, lo- gun show loopholes. Um, uh, but I... I I don't have a whole lot of faith that this country is uh, prepared or really all that motivated to tackle this topic. Um, when we have mass casualty events, mass shooting events, it's in the headlines for a week or so, and then people forget. Usually when you ask people what their priorities are when they're voting, gun control is typically pretty far down that list compared to issues like immigration and foreign policy. Um so, yeah, this is going to be another one of those topics where I'm going to be very eager to hear what you guys have to say. So that's going to do it for my intro. Thank you. No problem. Moving it over to K-Fellows. Yeah, I'm going to kind of echo sort of what Hutch said. I feel like the gun debate, I honestly hate the gun control debate because I feel like it has just become so politicized and we are accomplishing absolutely nothing. It's just one side versus the other side it's either you want the government to come and just trample over all of my rights or you want to see school children get gunned down on a regular basis and nothing is being accomplished and it's all the way up to the federal level where we have our sitting politicians just using it to virtue signal to their bases so that they can continue to get elected over and over again and it's just one of those situations where every election cycle somebody brings up the gun debate and it's like well the left wants to take all your guns well the right wants to see school children get gunned down and Unfortunately, I don't see our, our, our ability to move forward in this conversation and actually have a productive conversation on how we can prevent school children from being gunned down and still allow law-abiding citizens to have full access to having as many firearms as they want. I'm originally from Texas. They like guns. They like a lot of guns. I got a gun they like there. sheds full of guns. And I think that that's great as long as you are not harboring any hatred towards another individual and intending to kill another individual with your guns outside of the realm of self-defense and you should be able to have as many guns as you want without the federal government being in your business but i do agree that we do need to do something to try to prevent the number of people that get gunned down on a consistent basis in this country it is a problem and we need to start having a conversation about how to fix it okay we're gonna throw it over to ctv i feel like anytime we're talking about gun legislation there's a whole lot of other topics that are being brought up at the same time the constitution is framed in such a way to where it guarantees the right of the individual that the federal government will not be infringing on your right to keep and bear arms right so anything any type of legislation that you want needs to be at the state level right 
So moving forward from that, uh, I'm going to say zero legislation at the federal level. And there's no case that you're going to be able to make without you proposing, say, an Article 5 convention of the states in order to amend the Constitution and then remove the Second Amendment, in which case I think you'll have a much bigger problem on hand, right? But uh, beyond that, I think that if the state wants to put in some type of legeslation for what whatever possible situation that they have uh, to deal What's with, that, that they can do that, you know. So can the counties. Does that mean right? he's so can kill a town, you? right, or a city? They can obviously be more strict in the federal government when it comes to some of these rules, right? That's why, like, I use North Carolina as an instance um, because that's where I'm from and most familiar with that state constitution. But it lays out the exact language for the Second Amendment that's laid out in the federal and then includes exceptions when the state can actually uh, regulate that. So that's from the start of the country and the founding of the Constitution in 1787. That was the understood framework then. There's no reason for that framework to be understood any other way now. And that's exactly why people need to start taking a look at their states and not trying to have the federal government do anything like this. Because you're going to have a much bigger problem on hand trying to amend the Constitution to be able to do this. Then if you went to your state and took oh, care of things driver. locally, because with oh something God. like this, you want the power of it to be as close to the individual as possible. Okay, next we're going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, um, I uh, was looking up the uh, linked legislation, did some reading on it, and I, I tend to have a kind of a unique position um, online because I am uh, I tend to be a pro-gun lefty. Um, I am actually okay with some basic level um, gun control um, uh, as long as it's uh, reasonable and, and not um, easily, how do I say, uh, taken taken advantage of um for uh for uh targeted discrimination and what i'm saying is that uh, i in the in the legislation of the latest bill i looked into and i noticed there's a lot of fixation on criminal background checks which to me um seems like a bit of an oversight in my opinion especially given that t in, in that last year was the year of of us talking on a large scale about how uneven policing is in this country it seems to me that uh over police communities would be unduly um affected by a law that makes criminal background checks a part of the gun uh control process and i am actually concerned about that because i think there's a problem um with encroaching uh policing where uh many many laws can be written that can allow you to uh, enforce selectively on certain um, populations in the country. And if they're marginalized populations, um, that makes it pretty easy to target them. So I do have concerns about that. However, um, I do think that we need to be willing to address uh, some of the problems we have in this country with guns. American gun culture is beyond toxic. Uh, we have uh, we do not have a culture of gun safety. We have a culture of gun sales that has been run by the NRA for decades upon decades that does not put this, put safety or responsible gun ownership um, at the forefront. Um, I do believe there is great value in preserving the individual right to own guns. However, I think we must do so carefully because at the end of the day, a gun is a weapon and weapons kill people and killing people is, well, pretty final as it turns out. I think we should take these things very seriously. Um, and while I do believe, once again, that um, that individual gun ownership is a, a good right to have, we need to do so very responsibly. So I'm not opposed on a blanket level to um, gun control. I just think it needs to be done carefully. Okay, next I'm going to throw it over to Counterpoints. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is a, a very passionate subject of mine. It's something that I, I care about a lot, deeply. I think the balance of power between the civilians and uh, the government that serves them is incredibly important. I'm very happy and thankful to be born in a country that actually takes that very seriously and instituted it into its Republican framework. That being said, I do agree that something needs to be done, but that something needs to be done needs to be very targeted. And which I, what I didn't see in HR 127 was anything targeted. I saw very broad sweeping shit yeah, that's not going to address Obama. anything. It's not going to address good. criminality. It's not going to address drug dealing. It's not going to address broken end. communities. It's not going to address broken families. It's not going to address economics. It's not going to address mental health. It's not going to address, uh, all, all it's going to do is it's going to make you register your fucking weapons. And it's going to make you have increased background checks. That's all it's going to do. So uh, effectively, 
registration leads to confiscation is something that's uh, commonly said inside the uh, inside the pro gun community. And what I would like to see instead is, like everybody mentioned before, a real conversation about what we do in order to prevent mass shootings or at least reduce their frequency, and a real conversation about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, gang violence, broken families, and broken communities. So I think the left and the progressives rather than focusing on gun control, have a killer fucking argument when it comes to material conditions, broken families, and improving the lot of the average lives of citizens. It's and true. with that, I yield. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to No Comment Chick. Thank you, Ada. Appreciate that. Yeah, um, guns are a complicated issue. Um, I am embarrassed to live in like the only um, first world nation that has as much of a problem as many guns and as much gun violence in mass, you know, casualty events as we do. Um, but that being said, that's the hand that fate dealt us. And there's, you know, being mad about it isn't going to change it. Much like what Demon Mama said, I believe that concentrating on enforcement of gun legislation, in other words, confiscation, right now would be done at the expense of marginalized communities. I feel like the guns that would be taken away from people are the guns that are protecting people like me. And yes, I have had an experience before Thank you. where you know, Thank I you, was Gina. at a, a Pride event and the Proud Boys decided to show up, but so did the Socialist Rifle Association. And the fact that they were there with their guns was what kept me from getting my ass kicked so um yeah no i'm uh but i i would i feel like you know if we could turn back time if we could change the way that our country was formed you know yeah it'd be nice to like not have as many guns but doing it now basically police reform has got to be our priority i think we have to do police reform before we can meaningfully address anything to do with with the guns so, so that's you know my take on it Okay, we're going to throw it over to Trihex. Yeah, so the, the question posed here is, uh, are, we for, are we for federal gun control, right? And uh, just, just to I have a lot more to say, I'll, I'll answer that question directly first here. Yes, um, because ultimately, if we leave it to only states to sit, solve the situation, if we're even admitting here there's a problem with mass shootings, the problem here becomes the fact that you, you have like another Chicago or Illinois 2.0 problem where like some states... Typically, blue-leaning states will go a lot more hard on gun regulation, making things stricter, having longer uh, background check periods and whatnot here. And then comparatively, yeah, the, uh, the, the the lure of having a more relaxed gun economy will lead to sales, you know, spiking in neighboring uh, states anyway, so it makes the whole thing kind of redundant. You need a universal, uh, agreed way to tackle that, to not have the Chicago 2.0 problem reoccur again here. But if I can go further in on that, uh, aside from that particular question, ultimately about gun regulation, yeah, America has a huge gun fetishization problem. We already kind of alluded to that from earlier. Uh, people were saying this, saying this beforehand here. Um, we have more guns than people, and we already have plenty of. I'll, I'll just you know, going to wrap it, drop some fast facts for you here. Obviously, states that have more guns tend to have more gun violence, more gun deaths. Um, you know, we've had. If I if, we, if we're going to cherry pick one of the worst examples here, we can look at Sandy Hook, which happened December, December 2012. In which case. You know, since then, we've had 2,000 plus mass shootings, mass shootings being, you know, the gun violence where, you know, four more people were involved. And um, we've had 2,000 plus of those since. I, I agree, it's a huge problem. We need to clearly get that under control here. That's like not good at all under any condition, no matter how much of an advocate you are for guns. The gun violence and the gun deaths are out of control here. They're insane. Mm -hmm. uh, I recall a stat here that uh, uh, here we, we, USA is home to almost two thirds of the world's gun violence. It's it's abysmal across any metric here. Yes, it is. And the uh, there's a plenty there's plenty of like false narrative spun from like either um, uh, fear mongering that comes into play here, where you can look at NRA lobbying or we'll gun advocate lobbying all together here. Whether you want to say that more guns would make things more safer or having relaxed regulations so you can have you know more uh, more extreme concealed weapon permits be able to be acquired easier. Or just, again, just general scare tactics meant to just you know give a short term boost of sales for these gun manufacturers that comes into play as well yep. here. We have a gun and sales culture. Ultimately, what I'd like to see happen here, if we're going to get back on policy here, is obviously, uh, as someone in Louisiana, I can tell you a little bit more about that. But uh, gun gun show loopholes got to get close where they're able to still dodge background checks here. Got to have consistent background checks in the first place, and. Um, there's a lot more we can go into from that if you want to get into more of the specific policy stuff here. 
There was some stuff that I heavily disagree with uh, Biden on comparatively. If we go back to like things that Joe Biden has said that he will do in his administration back when he was running for the uh, Democratic primary. But that's if you want to get the more policy specific stuff there. I'll just conclude here that, yeah, I'm for I'm for federal regulation. I think states is going to ultimately just undermine everything and have an cons- inconsistent shit show of, uh, of enforcement, kind of like how we have with COVID at this point. And I like to see it at minimum uh, background checks can be consistent and honestly uh, address and admit here that we have a mass shooting and a gun violence problem, period. And I conclude. OK, next is going to be uh, Phil. Well, 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 well. You need five wells for a truly dramatic introduction here, folks. I'm very glad to be addressing this particular topic because it's one that is very close to my heart. I am somebody that I'm very proud to live in a nation that allows its citizens the greatest possible chance and rights of self-defense of any nation on earth. And so to that That is a good thing, objectively and measurably. Rights are the necessary conditions of one's proper existence, and every single one of us have a right to repel threats against ourselves and our loved ones. So I uh, do actually think this is going to be a very interesting debate to have, so long as we can avoid one thing that normally comes in the gun control debate. And it's both sides trying to claim that they have some sort of monopoly on care or they have some sort of monopoly, like, because you'll have the, well, you want people to die. No, 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 no. You see, you want people to die. No, no, no. You see, you want more people to die. If we can avoid that because we all want a better world, we're all looking for a way to try and improve our situation. That's where we can actually get somewhere. Because like Kay said, those are the kind of things that make this debate somewhat irretractable. Now, in regards to H.R. 127 that's being proposed, and uh, like, uh, I believe, oh goodness, I can't rem- remember who brought it up, but when I was looking over it, it really just kind of looks like we want to punish yeah, gun owners for owning guns. That's really what it kind of broke down to. We want to register your weapons. Let's, let's be frank, folks. The government only wants you to register things. They might need to know where it is later. There's really only one purpose for a registration for such a personal object like that. Now, in terms of uh, 2020, we actually added 8 million new gun owners to the United States. So those are people that, in the year 2020 especially, we all kind of learned, might be on our own. So that was when a lot of folks decided, I'm going to take my personal safety in my own hands and god bless them and i think uh something to keep in mind if we do have a registry here we've got over four three to four hundred million guns depending take your pick uh what pick what number but let's go with the most conservative number of 300 million guns we've got over 300 million guns many of and that's not even including ones that are still in operation from the civil war on so that's we right, probably so got a significant my amount goal is more. just to get more followers and they're wanting here. people to register and educate them. them now curious does anybody know how many bump stocks got registered when those got banned that's kind of what i'm getting at here is a lot of americans i mean a lot of americans are going to decide you know, I think peaceful non-compliance is actually a fairly valid form of civil disobedience. So we'll see what happens with that, folks. Okay, but cool. really, in regards Thanks, to Cyber. gun control... Uh, Appreciate that a lot. The fact that it's not popular and the fact that people have lost elections based on their stance shows that it's not really as popular as people would like you to think it is. And we'll see what the ultimate... Uh, how this H.R. 127 ultimate. ultimately shakes out. I don't think it's going to make its way through. Yeah, if I think it did, in the background. Right, we're going to see what the Supreme Court has to say about the Second Amendment here in a couple of years, won't we, folks? Uh, been the first time we've had an actually you know, favorable Second beautiful Amendment skin. Supreme Court. So, with all like, that skin being is perfectly said, folks, clear. I'm very much Holy looking shit. forward to this discussion on Second yeah. Amendment rights in America, and will we have like greater away. gun control in this nation? I've got so like scars that, on my cheeks. He's got, got like glowing Congress. skin. Yeah, okay. but oh, okay. give it time. Okay, I yield back the balance of my time. What? Wonderful. <laughs> Negative you over, uh, you over withdrew. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna go now on to the open discussion. I need to use the bathroom desperately, so for the first one minute, don't kill each other. Can you all promise me that? Yes, sure. Okay, we'll try. Okay, I'll be right back. I'd like, thank I you. Will.
rabble, oh. rabble, rabble, rabble. Right. Well, so let me ask, I just want to ask this question, right? It seemed like everybody was pretty much for some type of federal legislation except for Phil and myself. Is that fair? Or, um, what, what, or, I, what I want to see passed, I doubt you would have too much objection to. Okay, so I'm for zero federal, right? So that's yeah, I, I get it. Okay. So I'm like just, I'm just, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm sorry. What? What would you like to see pass, sir? I'm just curious. Oh yeah. Okay. So so specifically, this is this is a, a question of confidence. We we're really Phil talking about access to firearms versus like what kind of people like own firearms. I think any God fearing, gun loving, bacon eating fucking American uh, wants the American population to actually know how to use guns. Uh, toddlers right. get killed. Kids get killed. These things are stolen from uh, you know houses. They're stolen from cars. Um, the gun show loophole, I hate to say, is kind of a red herring because basically like all the guns that are used in homicides are not bought at a gun show they're burglarized from people's cars and houses um so educating the population whether it's at the high school level or when they go to purchase a firearm about safe storage potential theft burglary the four uh the four uh safety rules all that kind of stuff i'm not saying that that is necessary to prevent people from owning guns but that education needs to be if we're gonna have guns which one? the people who own those guns need to be educated and that that's what I would like to encourage societally. One Wait, thing I don't like to that being a red just, herring, though, like, but just because it is. Just because the there's criminal's a lot of favorite gun through. is the one you leave in your car. That's the criminal's well, favorite gun. Whatever gun is left in your car, that's the one the criminal loves. So he's got a very good point there. But I will say in counter to the idea of safe storage is gun owners of America, if you let the anti gunners into your house to decide if your storage is up to their standards, you're in for a world of trouble. So well, let me. 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 Okay. Okay. Phil, you weren't here for that. When I talk, no one talks. Uh, just want to throw that out there right now. So, uh, once again, uh, now when you all talk at the same time, you think it would be eight times more information. It's actually zero information because once again, nobody can hear you when you all talk at the same time. Um, okay, so I see yes. that Connor Pope is Jupiter, raising yes. your hand, but I also heard Trihex got interrupted earlier when he was trying to say something. So would you like to clarify what you're trying to say, Trihex? Oh, well, so Connor seems opposed to, well, he, he dubbed that the gun show loophole is a red herring and is a, and it shouldn't even be entertained to close that loophole because because the, the statistic that, like, uh, what were you saying, that gun gun violence happens through illegally obtained firearms anyway, right? Is that what you were, is that what you were alluding, alluding to? Honor. Yeah. Um. Let me know whether or not do I do I have like a minute to address two points, your point and uh, KOE's sure, point. Sure, you can you can go. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sure, okay. All right. So yeah. So all right. Not trying to be mean, but oh, baby, it's uh, all love. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. So so basically, when it comes to the gun show loophole, when it comes to mass shootings. Gun gun show loophole. The uh, guns bought at gun shows are, are not he, the ones that are being did he used in his homicides. Room? Additionally, uh, if you're talking about Change like you know gang Change violence, drug violence, domestic violence, all that kind of stuff, that shit's not being bought at a gun show loophole. So closing the uh, th there's a form that you have to fill out. What is this gun you, show wait, loophole? On, I'm almost done for me. I don't yield. Uh, so, um, so, so basically, uh, if you go to a gun show, uh, private private dealers do not have to disclose the purchase or sale uh, of their firearms to another fucking person. They don't have to do a background check. They can just do a private uh, person to person sale. So, so that's the that's the issue. But if you were to implement or impose a mandatory background check and a mandatory bill of sale, effectively what you're doing is you're generating a 4473. That's the, uh, that's, the, that's the background check form for purchasing a firearm. 4473s do get filed with the ATF. You've created a de facto registration. Um, so basically, people should be able yes. to transfer private firearms between each other uh, without any kind of government instead, in intervention or background check because it shouldn't be registered what firearms are going where. Uh, and, and then I can expand upon this point later, but I just want to address the safe storage argument by KOE before I, I shut up. I didn't hear a gun show loophole. What I heard was you specifically oh, say that they were me. private I sales. Yield. I don't yield. I don't yield. Okay. okay. Felt like we were done. Okay. Give me 30 seconds. I need 30 seconds. Yeah, you need the new. Okay. So, KOE, you were talking about uh, safe storage and how you don't want it to be legislated because you don't want the federal government dictating what people do with safe storage. I don't give a fuck what you do with your guns inside your own house. Leave it out by your fucking toddler. But what I'm okay with 
is if your fucking toddler gets killed by a gun that you fucking left out, you're criminally charged. If a gun is stolen from your house because it was improperly st uh, uh, improperly stored and then it's used in a fucking crime, and let's say that uh, the, the freak accident happens, a burglar steals your gun that's improperly secured and then you and then is used in a fucking mass shooting then you're fucking civilly liable for part of the fucking crimes that are committed with the firearm that you allowed to be stolen i yield yeah uh, can demon, i respond to that sure yeah. but demon mama uh, has risen their hand and try did you want to also respond to wow. that wow yeah I'll, I'll let demon mama go first before i okay. uh yeah um so there's just a like there's a lot here uh i'm kind of neutral on the questions of gun shows personally i think there's a lot of problems with gun shows on a cultural level having gone to many of them over time um uh, particularly that a lot of gun shows also tend to have a whole bunch of stands selling confederate flags and nazi flags and all kinds of stuff like that and i think that's an issue with the culture as a whole um that surrounds gun culture in america um that there's this idea that it's going to be that uh, buying guns is about prepping for some sort of coming civil war which is i find really really fucking concerning but i think there's another thing that needs to be addressed um which is the fact that um, a lot of gun violence in America is self-inflicted and um, and it's a lot of men who die uh, from this because they tend to choose more lethal methods. Um, it, it, there is evidence shown that um, safe storage does reduce the likelihood of, um, uh, of self-harm um if from family members or from the owner themselves and i think that's something that a lot of gun owners need to pay attention to and this is something that i talk about again as someone who supports building a healthier gun culture in america because i do support independent gun ownership um i think that we need to be really frank and honest about the fact that a lot of people kill themselves with guns that are not properly secured and the fact that the sort of fantasy of like the castle doctrine like whipping out your gun and blowing away a burglar that's in your house just doesn't really happen all that frequently um most of the time people can't get to their guns even when they're not properly secured and they're not really ne necessarily likely to use them um or if they're in like an apartment they'll blast through the floor and hit somebody else or endanger somebody else's live lives to me the value in gun ownership is in in its collective value that um places that um have a healthy gun culture and and regular gun ownership are much less likely to be imposed upon by white nationalist gangs um by uh extremely unjust uh government action because there's a knowledge that these people are legally armed and can legally protect themselves the fantasy of um of like again that the sort of hero whipping out the gun and blowing away the invader is just not really there and the price that we're paying as a country by not addressing this issue is that a lot of people a lot of young men are killing themselves with guns that are not properly secured and I think that's a really big tragedy that a lot of people overlook and that I don't think it necessarily needs to be a particularly um, polarizing issue. I think both right-wingers and left-wingers who support gun rights should be able to say, yeah, this is actually a big problem. We probably should try to look into a way to change this. And a lot of that might come from encouraging much healthier storage of weapons. Okay. Um, can I ask you, no comment, did you raise your hand earlier or did I miss that? Uh, no, that was actually right next to me, or I don't know if okay, she's right okay. next to me. Sorry, I just saw I just saw some comments from chat. I think it was K. Okay, okay. So I believe it was going to be Trihex, yep. and Phil. Then it's going to be K after that. Okay, just going from the okay. order they raised their hand. Okay, so try your first. Okay, so uh, okay. so Connor, okay. yeah, I'm not I'm not here to like um let, let's bring it back a little bit here because like my whole thing is I'm not here to like rain on the parade yes, of clowns. like having yes. like gun owners yes. locked down and like and be completely whatever like demoralized with their gun freedom or whatever really what i'm getting at here is that like it's the gun violence the excessive amount of it that happens in america the excessive amount of like the fact that we've had um what is what is it right here we've had like uh i think it's 12 12 persons die from gun violence per 100,000 capita in usa and it's increased from 10 to almost 12 in the last uh 10 years or something like that I it's, it's, it's but, but, but we're honest, though, the point here is that there is a saturation of gun violence, and that that is the issue to me. The issue isn't how relaxed um, <laughs> Cooper, gun handling fuck? is or how how extreme yeah, all that is. It's, it's the problem sure, is the consequence of the of the gun violence. <laughs> so with that in mind, whenever you're bringing up things like that, the uh, that the gun show 
loophole or, or whatever you want to call it here is ultimately skipping the background check or skipping the logging of where guns go. I have to ask here, well, to, like then what's the point of the formal uh, background check at an at a, at a gun at a gun store compared to the gun show? Then is it not just belittling the whole thing here? Wouldn't anyone wants to do anything just go for the, the the exploit anyway at the at the gun show comparatively? Now, okay. I don't know if you want to equate here the gun show to the to like a private sale uh, there, or or yeah, not there. there. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. So uh, basically, the the American the American per capita homicide rate, as it stands right now, is like five per one hundred thousand. Uh, Europe and or Western Europe, by comparison, is around two per one hundred thousand, or one point five to one point seven per one hundred thousand. And we're not the most violent country on the planet. Some countries have a fucking twenty two or fifty per 100,000 fucking homicide rate, like fucking Nicaragua or Mexico or a whole bunch of other different countries. Um, so it's not necessarily the guns that are driving the homicide rate. And by comparison, we Kinda are actually worse say than like developed that. Like countries. Like fucking X so that, country. that is the barometer by which we are being measured. Specifically developed me countries that often have stricter um, gun control. So specifically, um, and also on top of that, this, this is like a, a cultural and chronological thing. So back in the 1960s, our and, homicide rate was around CTV. five per 100,000. And that was the, the standard back then. It actually almost doubled by like 1992 to 1994 to around 10 to 12 per 100,000. And we've effectively cut that in half in the past 20 to 30 years. We're back down to five per 100,000 through potentially aggressive policing that we all want uh. to perform. Hold on, uh, I'm almost done. Um, so, so the point being that there's a whole bunch of stronger, infinitely stronger. Uh, so, so I have concerns about registration because historically registration has led to confiscation. The 4473 and universal application of 4473 uh, forms Oops. to gun sales would be de facto registration, whether you like it or not. Um, and then basically there's so many other things that I can do or that we could do. And that the left, I think, has much stronger no arguments for, Thanks like for fixing here. broken families, fixing broken communities, basically, uh, you know, uh, fixing systemic racism, um, you know, fixing income inequality, all of these things that improve the lives of average material citizens. Um, it would basically reduce the homicide rate, maybe not to the, uh, the European levels, but just to give you uh, an idea, the homicide rate in the black community specifically is 22 per 100,000. It's fucking brutal. So there's there's a there's obviously if you look at the the white per capita homicide rate and you look at the black per, uh, per capita homicide rate there's obviously something going on in these communities that's different and we should address that difference to reduce homicides. Um, be interesting. Uh, I'm, oh. Yeah, uh, Phil, you are next, and then it's going to be Kay. All right, sweet. Uh, very interesting uh, take there, and looking forward to further analysis on that. But I wanted to get a little deeper into something you were saying when it came to if uh in regards to safe storage whether you're talking about if a child were to get your gun or if it were to be stolen two entirely different things in my opinion now if a child were to get a gun to get to where you want to go that would just require a very small tweak in our criminal criminal negligence laws and i think we could actually get a lot closer to where you're wanting to go in that without having to do some sort of large sweeping gun control in regards to stolen firearms uh boy howdy like you're you want, like somebody's a victim mm. of a crime theft and now you want to make them responsible for what somebody does with that. That like, I'm sorry, we don't make people responsible for the crimes of other people. So there's really, I'm just afraid, there's no verbal jujitsu that you're going to get me to say, yes, I want people who are the victims of crimes to be responsible for what the people who perpetrated those crimes against them did afterwards. I, I'm sorry, there's just no way you're going to get there. That's a perversion of justice by any measure. I'm sorry. Interjection. No. Can I go? Okay, I'll be I'll be very brief for everybody else's fucking sake of time, okay? Okay, I didn't say criminally, I said civilly. So basically, and specifically I'm talking about negligence. So for instance, if I leave a firearm inside a McDonald's bathroom and a toddler walks into that bathroom and shoots themselves with my gun, then I am going to be charged with negligence. Seems reasonable That's what to me. I mean. So if a, if, if a burglar breaks into your house, steals your gun, and commits a crime six months later, I don't give a fuck. That's not your fault. But there, we have to assign a certain le rights. Th this is what I'm pissed off, and they'll shut the fuck up. I am perfectly fine with rights. I also want to talk about responsibilities, 
And I want the left and the right to start talking about social responsibilities that come with our rights. Right. Okay. So okay. I've listened to everybody one, one moment, in the room. Before you say something, CTV, uh, okay. Trihex, you were, that was directed at you originally. Oh, so did you want to mm -hmm. respond to that? Um, or you could just pass it if you don't. Well, I feel like I kind of like, I lost mm -hmm. what I was going to say initially. Cause we like kind of went, cause like I, a lot of those were at me. And then I, I didn't write down specifically what Welcome I wanted back. to get into there other than like, um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I largely still disagree with a lot of what you're saying, but that but that's okay though. Uh, we can. I'll, I'll better refine myself whenever we get back to me and you talking more, Connor. Okay. I'm, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let CTV go. Got it. Before you, CTV Oblivix, goes yeah. though, K did raise their hand, and then CTV, then Hutch. I'll put CTV between it. We'll make a sandwich. K, you're next. Yeah, I just kind of, I kind of want to echo what Connor was saying about more of this being like a responsibility discussion because I see it being a very, very slippery slope if we're going to try to legislate the idea of what is considered. Uh, safely putting your firearm away or safely keeping it because there there are cars. issues along those lines being that I have seen uh, situations specifically with uh, domestic violence cases where you know women have gone to sleep with their guns underneath their pillows because they're terrified they're they're half they're half awake throughout the night waiting for their uh, abusive partner to break into their house and they live in this constant fear. So for us to try to legislate that, you know, you have to have your gun stored in a safe, a, a specific distance away, a specific height so that your children cannot get to it. I think we kind of get into a gray area where it comes to every case is different. Every situation is different. And everybody has a firearm for different reasons. So I think that this does need to be more of a discussion about responsibility and, and education on how to be responsible when owning a firearm in your home, particularly whenever you do have small children or or people that struggle from severe mental illness that aren't capable of understanding safety guidelines with firearms. Five seconds. Everybody who listened to that, Google stop box. If you have a firearm inside your home, if you have children or mentally unstable people, look at stop box. It's very cheap um, and it's a good product. Okay. Green, you know that was more than five seconds. Sorry. Well. All right. So, That's why I wasn't on submarines like you. That takes a lot of math to be in a submarine. It does, actually. Um, yeah, like the uh, fact that... Well, I meant that for, unironically. For, 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 like, for every 100 feet you go down, it's four, 44 pounds per square inch of pressure, right? So, been in a pretty, pretty uh, pressure and fired... I just made up a word. <laughs> All right, so... I listen to everybody, and everybody seems to be for some type of federal legislation, which lets me kind of know that I am not in the room with principled people, right? <laughs> for sure. Because, well, of course. I mean, if we understand this, right, then what we need to understand first is that the Second Amendment is there, and it has the language, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Right now, you take that one idea and then you read every fucking thing before that where it lays out what the framework of the federal government is right so either a you're an american and you believe in the constitution right and the fact that the federal government is the one that should not be making any laws with regard to weapons because why they shall not be infringed upon right so if you all of these arguments are great arguments, right, for you to take to your state government, right, and, and convince the people inside your state that that's what needs to happen. But if they don't, don't go crying to the fucking federal government. Because the reality is, is that in D.C. versus Heller, right, the Supreme Court said, hey, guess what? So how is it probably going to be viewed? in the aspect that the federal government is the one that should not be making weapons laws. Leave that up to the states. Matter okay. of fact, there's a whole lot of issues okay. that you should be leaving at the state level and not bring it to the federal level. This shows a gross misunderstanding of the actual no. fucking form of government and, and, and definitely a need of civics education, right? So that's kind of where we're at with it. I haven't heard any reason at all for the federal government to be getting involved. Hey, let's not suck. I it. can tell you one. Goes to the dick of the founding fathers too hard. CTV. Yeah, um, okay. I, I can Wait, give you some. For dicks I want. <clears throat> Don't oh, shame me. No comment, chick. You can have Wait, all the dicks it... you want, Connor. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and the crush continues. <laughs> Hutch, okay. you'd like to go. So you... back. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So. <laughs> 
okay. So we're going back. We're going. We're going back to um, the list. I don't know who rose. Uh, if uh, you remember, or, yeah, I know. Yeah, your next hutch. But I'm trying to figure out chat if you could help me. Who rose the uh, rose the hand first? Was the demon mama or try uh, hutch? You're next. So I'm I'm glad you brought up DC versus Heller because Scalia, in that opinion, wrote nothing. In our opinion, should be taken to cast doubt on longstanding prohibitions on the pro possession of firearms by felons and the mentally ill, or laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places such as schools, government buildings, or laws imposing conditions and qualifications I'll let go on first. the commercial uh, sale of arms. Uh, also, just to like hit on the, the wording of the Second Amendment, it's so bad and confusing. It doesn't make any fucking sense. A no. well-regulated... Like, you talk about shall not be infringed. The, the fucking amendment starts with a well-regulated militia. Now, <laughs> militia. Now, we can qu quibble about what that means. And Scalia wow. himself said that... Anyways. Did you read any of the previous parts of the Constitution? It, it yeah, pretty much yes. lays out the idea so, there. Let me just you, lay it out for you. A well-regulated militia, comma, being necessary for the security of a free state, comma, the right Semi to keep and bear arms. Semicolon. It doesn't matter. It, the, the it doesn't doesn't matter. make any sense. It's, 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 it's literally how English confusing. works. <laughs> it's literally how English the works, man. I didn't is, make up the fucking language. I was born uh, here in 1983. Yeah, I showed uh, up. Uh, people uh, taught me the language. I started learning how it fucking worked. Anyways. <laughs> Okay. It's an incredibly confusing amendment, and obviously oh, really? it's like very much open to interpretation. But I just wanted to oh. like clarify your position, CTB, because you said there should be no federal legislation whatsoever to infringe on anyone's right to bear. Do you think that the federal government should be able to, to tell people uh, you can't own a nuclear weapon? I just want to test like how much. Oh, see, I'm you glad you bring up nuclear arms. I'm so glad that you do, because I feel like it, it was irresponsible of the government post-World War II at the discovery of the atomic age. No, no, no we're getting right? off the rails here. Oh, no, 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 no. Are you going to ask a question? Oh, you asked a question. Do you want the fucking getting, answer, or do you just want to be screamed at? But Which one you want? Question, though. Do you I'm think trying the press, to answer the question. Think, are you going to listen? Think, do you think that the federal government should prohibit individuals I'm from owning... I'm redressing the question. I'm saying okay. the question so that the answer... Jesus Christ. Okay, so... Salad dressing. Come All on, right, bro. so <laughs> undress them. with regard to nuclear weapons, I'm glad you asked. At the discovery of the atomic age, I really feel like that was very specifically one instance that our founders would not have been able to see. And when the atomic age was discovered, right, because it was already here, we just didn't know that it was. We had to discover it, right? That's how these things work. So once we discovered it, the Constitution should have amended to include that the federal government had the power when it came to controlling atomic energy, right? Be it for nuclear power plants or for nuclear weapons, right? Okay. That's where the Constitution needed to be amended for this thing that is completely brand new, and there was no fucking way that they would have been able to see it. Now, you can argue every other that? point, but they would have been able to see, like, advanced ships. They would have been able to see guns. They would have been able to see... A it's lot a, of these other different guns that were out there available, they would have been able to see all that. But with regard to okay. nuclear energy, the Constitution should have been amended. No, I'm talking about nuclear weapons. I mean, like, forget about nuclear weapons. What about a Gatling gun, a minigun or something like that, right? Like, th those didn't exist at the time of the founding fathers. There was the Puckle that. gun. Yes, yeah, there yeah. was. Matter of yeah, fact, did. we already uh, had that Gatling, before. A minigun? A yeah. minigun? Yeah, I said Puckle gun, yeah. On the level that we have now? Or is that, yes. Is that what can this you explain that to argument. me? Like, Almost it's rudimentary say, technology. If you go into a fight with one of those against modern weaponry, be honest. So that, that's my point. Are you saying that a modern Gatling gun could compete with the sort of weapon that you're describing from 1776? Or Whether it can compete with it doesn't matter. It's still that's rudimentary point, technology it that was just advanced. Matter? It's still it's the it's same matter. technology. Okay. 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 Now, okay. Wanna... Go, go, go. Give me give me a second. Come okay. on. Let me hop starting. in here, please. Yeah. Um. Okay. Hutch, well, finish your last point and... Most of the chat said it was try, so that it's yes. try the demon. So okay. it's going to be Hutch finished and try. And I'll put so if CTV, if CTV is saying is agreeing that the Constitution should have been amended and updated, which is a position that I completely agree with you on, then are you not arguing that the federal government has a right to determine like what sort of fire? Are you not arguing that the federal government has uh, uh, or sh has a responsibility to its citizens to regulate firearms at a federal no, level? I think the citizens have a responsibility to bring it before the federal government and have the Constitution amended because that's literally how this whole system works. That's it's controlled control. by the people. That's right? gun control. That's Thank a you. No. Okay, so appreciate that. If no. the federal government well, you... tells you you can't own Hello? Weapon, are you not listening? I'm if you don't to want you. to start with an amendment to the Constitution, which is exactly what you would need in order to change the way the framework is written now, uh -huh. right? If you're not at, if you're not talking about doing that thing, right? Then, 
you're not talking about anything because reality is the way the law is written, there is no room for federal legislation when it comes to firearms. None. Okay. But my, do, do you not understand what I'm saying, though? You are arguing that federal gun control is uh, justified. If you're saying that we should update uh, or we should... We gun should, control uh, is not nuclear control. Arms control, whatever you want to say. I don't know how to like. Phrase I'm, this I'm in addressing a, way a gonna... very specific technology that was discovered, right? RPGs. The fucking split of RPGs. The, 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 that RPGs. is not the splitting of an atom, is it? RPGs. Right, we like we literally to... have provisions in the Constitution that allow us feel... to fucking okay, make right, right. make room for the sciences, right, okay. and the arts. So this is one of those things that should have been amended then at the discovery of the this atomic is what age. The fuck, this is what the fuck I'm talking about when I say that, like, when we get into these gun control conversations, this reminds me of the conversation we just had a little bit ago about discrimination versus judgment. This is just completely pointless, and you just derail the conversation, and you end up... Right, because I'm, 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 I'm literally okay. pointing out science to you, and it's it's incapable of being understood. I understand. Well, okay, so we're going to go over to Trihex now, and then it's going yeah. to be Demon, uh, Phil, then Connor. All right, so CCV. So you're a, you're a diehard constitutionalist, um, and but you but you're really an advocate for verbatim how things are stated in the Second Amendment, which you are agreeing is an amendment to the Constitution. So therefore, it was an extension that was added after the Constitution was initially drafted. So then you probably would be would be open to more amendments to happen in the future, would you not? If there was a calling for either like a lapse in specificity or just like a need to be addressed in the situation right here, because. We're getting, like, you know, a, a very antiquated amendment interpreted in the I best know, of faith catering to whatever what you shame. want done. Like, you, you, you have to give us something here. Obviously, Second Amendment was was drafted in relation to weapons at that time, m mainly muskets, which were take minutes to load and are incredibly oh. inaccurate and are nowhere near comparable to modern weaponry. You, oh. you, you, you got to give me something here, dude. Are, are, are you just, okay. like, so in I'll, denial? I'll address, oh. I'll address this, right? So Thomas Jefferson's it. favorite we, gun had a 22-round capacity. Right, so we had, we've had 16 amendments that got added got since the 10th Amendment, right? 16 amendments have been added, right? And then we also looked at Article 5, where it, it spells out specifically how you might go about amending part of this Constitution, right? So, since we understand what needs to happen as far as to be able to get to that point, that's what you would need to do if you were a principled person when it came to getting anything done with regard to federal legislation is you would need to have the Constitution amended. And this is where a big fucking problem comes in between the left and the right because you're just like, hey, over here on the left, we'll say that we're, we're for guns, right? But then we're like, well, we want the federal government involved in this area. Then you're not really for the Constitution or the Second Amendment or for guns because you don't want to protect the individual's right to be able to protect themselves from not just government, right, but some asshole trying to break in your house or you're going through a walk in the fucking woods and a bear comes out of fucking nowhere, well, right? You can think, so there's you can, three well, instances right there where you would want the ability to have a weapon, right, and the principled stance from the writing of the Constitution and the way that it's also being explained in the Federalist Papers is that it shall not be infringed and any legislation that you would want needs to be done at the state level. I feel like you're, you're entertaining an incredibly slippery slope because you want it because you're just you're terrified that if anything happens on gun regulation or gun safety, that you're going to have like your entire gun ownership revoked entirely here. Like they're like the idea here that like anything's going to happen to the point you have an insane gun culture where like Beto War got obliterated because he said, you know, we're going to we're going to do uh, gun buybacks vaguely didn't even say definitively after that, that horrible shooting happened in Texas back in 2018 or, or whatever year it was. Like, dog, you're, you're not going to... I hate that you're entertaining such an extreme slippery slope and, like, you're not even entertaining the reality that we have, like, a mega gun violence problem. Um, that's not I, look, what, okay. what I'm really trying to do is, is to point you in the direction where you can be able to enact the kind of good that you would want, which is at your state legislature. Not the federal government. Okay, let's until, go okay, until, let's go. hold let's on, go. until, you, you talk all the, the time, dude. You until the, the Constitution has been you. amended. Okay. Oh my God, Dylan, okay. please, please, dude. Yeah, you, like okay. I haven't even got to finish my point at all okay. once yet. It comes okay. in every time here. You can, you, you, you get an unrestricted go, and then we so, got to move it over. All to I want to say here is that you still have not actually addressed your your opposition to like a federal overreach of any kind or any kind of policy there, because I've already any brought up policies. No, you are talking over me. You gotta let me finish, dude. Chicago 2.0. If we say, leave it up to states here, what will happen? 
Blue state is going to go for the policy. Red state, neighboring state will not. And you're going to have all the guns coming from that state. It's going to be the same shit as Chicago was yep. in the first place here. Yep. It won't actually solve the problem. You're throwing me a technicality. It doesn't solve the problem for admitting that gun violence is still an issue. It's like having the COVID thing right now. If the, if a blue state has like a, you know, like a, like LA has like a hardcore lockdown to prevent COVID spread, and then Arkansas doesn't really give a shit, what's the point anyway, right? We're not regulating where fucking people travel between Arkansas and, and, and Los Angeles here, so it's the same fucking difference. So like, you, you gotta like address the act. Don't tell me the technicality of what you want to do with states' rights. Tell me how you're actually going to address the substance of I'm the calling problem it a, in America. I'm calling it a principle, not a technicality. I, okay. I Mo think- Moving on with the moment. Okay. Um, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff going on in this conversation, but, um, I, I think the position of like constitutional, like originalism or whatever is, is totally bunk. Um, the constitution has been amended many times. Yes. Should it, it should not be easy necessarily to amend the constitution, but it should be possible. I think everyone would agree with this. Anybody who doesn't is contesting to civil rights in America. Um, and basically all, many major improvements to our country. So that's just a very silly, the idea that like believing that we can amend the constitution is like unprincipled is silly. Um, but secondly, uh, I really like the fact that, uh, Trihex brought up, um, issues of red states and blue states we value and we should value the freedom of movement across the states very highly but that introduces some problems for example if uh say i don't know texas bordering a whole bunch of other states decides to legalize uh i don't know rpgs like was said or um huge machine guns or whatever um then you have a problem because somebody could easily take that to the neighboring state and blow the shit out of somebody and there wouldn't even be able they wouldn't even be able to defend themselves with the guns they have there so there's there are issues where um we need to be able to address the fact that like okay clearly um there has been a considerable amount of technological advancement from the beginning clearly the second amendment isn't perfectly clear a lot of people have interpreted it differently over time and i think that we can come to a recognition that uh people have a right to be able to move between the states freely and also be safe doing existing in their state and not have to worry about a mob of people with fucking truck mounted miniguns rolling into their state blowing them up and then driving back <laughs> like it's ridiculous but it, but but this is a, this is a serious risk especially as we see this very last oh. summer an issue of someone illegally transporting a um a firearm while underage across state lines and killing people and i'm not going to get into the, the entire dialogue over that but nonetheless this this uh example is um is not exactly far-fetched far in fact we've had this many times in our history so we have to be able to acknowledge that um that this is not like some frivolous concern nor is it representative of some like lack of principles to say hey we might need to clarify some things in our constitution um i i think at the end of the day it's always interesting to find out what people believe the purpose of the Second Amendment actually is. In my opinion, the the Second Amendment has, despite the fact that I always support independent gun ownership, that it is clear that the Second Amendment was designed to be able to allow communities to defend themselves um, in a much different time that we do not live in any uh, in anymore and the and the goal then we should focus on being able to uh, equip communities to defend themselves reasonably and that does not mean um allowing people complete and un completely unrestricted ownership of all firearms into the future i mean what are we going to be having the same debate when fucking laser guns exist when plasma rifles exist and then we're going to have people being able to melt down an entire house with a single shot this is ridiculous like obviously we have to be able to oh, evolve and adjust with changing technology and uh let's be real the purpose of gun control i i know there's some people who think oh you need to be able to resist the government N unless you're literally talking about owning tanks and drones you're not going to be able to defend yourself against the government um, so give me give me uh, give me a moment give me give me give me give me a moment oh, here God. uh okay so the, you there's a lot of points being made here there's a there's a lot of dialogue being made would it be cool if we moved it on a little bit it went, Can, it, sure. Okay, just give me a moment. I just here. say my uh, we'll, 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 Give me, give me one second. Give me a moment. Okay. So I don't think it's a bad I argument. I thought it was clear about this. When I talk, sure. no one else does. I have the list. I know you're thinking like, I know I'm next. I know. I wrote your name down. I, when people raise their hand, I write it down. So I just wanted to uh, say quickly that, uh, you know, 
I think it'd be cool if we had a quick question to cool things down. Raise your hand if you like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Raise it. Boo. The amount of disrespect from Trihex here to not raise his hand on the best ice cream flavor is absolutely fucking disgusting. Sin. Actually, from a disgusting yeah. conduct from Trihex. This is more disrespectful if you just didn't show up. Honestly, horrible. No, I'm not. Mint ice cream. Sin mint brownies, a crime. I'm a at all. Why would you ruin brownies? Why would you ruin brownies? Why would I want? Why would I want toothpaste as a flavor for my food? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Garbage. Wait, 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 wait. You know garbage. the most popular gum flavor is mint, and it's for a reason because some people like to have delicate. Man, that is a lot of defective refined, tongues, bro. That, that's that's crazy. Is that, is that the Rona spreading right there? I don't know what's going on there, dude. You think you, you mean? I feel like this is kind of like a like flat earther mentality. You know what I mean? Like when when I say when I when I say by that is when it you're the person like, like oh everybody else is the actual sheeple. I'm not the nutter one. They're the nutter one. When they're That's actually right. the people who no are the normal ones with refined palates. Just because you can't taste anything trihex doesn't mean you need to project that in front. You could have just pretended to like mint to be normal, to be an average <laughs> decent human being. You can pretend it. Okay, now you're flavor shaming. That's fucked up. Mm -hmm. I, I will shame. I will shame. I will shame. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty progressive, wow. but I will be a hardcore reactionary on mint ice cream. Okay, if you don't like mint ice cream, you're just saying you don't have good taste. So you know, you know what? To be fair, to be fair, mint ice cream I could tolerate. It's really mint brownies. I'm, I'm beefing on. If we're being honest here, that uh, I don't vibe with. Yeah, you're right about that. Okay. Uh, I'm I Dylan do like Burns, mint ice cream if a lot. you don't like mint ice yeah. cream, then. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Allow <laughs> me here. Yeah. Short anecdote. One time, classroom, um, some teacher, I forget what whatever it was, a teacher brought like brownies, and I was like, yo, I'm about to slam down 800 calories of brownies like real quick here. I bit into it thinking it was a wonderful, gooey, fudge induced, fun time of sugar, sin, and butter and fat. I bite into it, mint, buzzkill. No, he's been traumatized. We need to just yeah. we need to reset that. Have I ever had a mint brownie? I don't know. I mean, it's not true. Really a good idea. Have, have, have a question here before we judge me. Have you had mint brownies before? Mint chocolate brownies. I have not, but you were making these determinations about mint ice cream oh, too. Yeah, that, no, right? that's fair. I, I'm now I'm admitting guilt of that. And I'm retracting. I, I could okay. I could tolerate I mint ice cream. I'm the first debate champion. I just won. I won the belt. Now you have to defend me. <laughs> I said it's really you mint. I'm, you're right. I'm projecting from my this. experience, my traumatization from mint chocolate brownies. Oh wait, hold here. on, hold on, Dylan, hold on, hold on, wait. Get a look. All right. Oh, oh you're... Is that supposed to be an easy clap? <laughs> what was that? I thought that was like it's a, a bell, round dude. Round. Like Jesus Christ, how many you motherfuckers <laughs> watching <laughs> WWE? That's the fucking ding. You know, the three count. Bad well, Come on. This match and Jesus! Oh my God! Okay. okay, 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 okay. That's enough. To, that now we can get back into the heated discussion. Next, ah. now I'm gonna do. I know, Tay, you had your hand raised, but we're gonna go Phil, Connor, and then I want to see if we can ditch the notepad because we're kind of just working off the notepad for a second here. So I see if we can go back to open discussion. I, okay, I said I saw your hand. I just uh, really quick, if I can just say what I need to say because I actually have to go because I have to get my husband up for work in a couple hours and I need to sleep. So oh. I'm just gonna. If I can just say like this last piece, uh -huh. it kind of give my closing statement, and then I'm actually gonna have to dip. Okay. Uh, first of all, like Dylan's not I happy about loved that the discussion, guys. Uh, I thought it was great, and I respect each and every one of you and all of your opinions. And um, I thank happy. you, Dylan, for having me on. Uh, I really uh, I had a great time discussing all these different issues, and uh, I hope that I can come back in the future. And with that, I'm gonna go because I have to get my husband up in like two and a half hours and I haven't slept in like 12. So I will see you guys later. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. Peace. Good luck. See ya. Okay. Um, we're gonna, eight. okay. So now it's Phil and Connor. Then we're gonna get off the notepad hopefully. Uh, and probably we're actually gonna move on to the last topic. I, I can do mine as closing if you want. All uh, right. Sure, Phil. Um, now in regards to can your firearms have any any sort of effect against military hardware? I believe that was Demon Mama that was making that uh, argument. You know, if that was the case, then they wouldn't even bother to issue rifles to soldiers in a battlefield. For the last 10 years, our soldiers in battle have been going up against, in Afghanistan, folks with...
the surplus Russian equipment and rusty Kalashnikov rifles, yet they've still been able to cause quite a problem for just about every empire that's ever gone there. So the idea that they have no effect at all is, I, you know, that's just not analyzing history. Now, in regards to also you said uh, we've never amended, it's not right to say we shouldn't amend the Constitution. We have amended the Constitution several times and to do good things. But what we're discussing here in this instance would be something unique to anything ever in American history and a truly dangerous precedent at that. For the first time, we would Why? be amending the American Constitution to take rights away from Americans. This has never happened before in our history, and this would be setting a very dangerous precedent indeed. And so I just cannot get behind that. And two last thoughts I just wanted to say. Uh, I believe it was Trihex was saying that they just didn't, the founding fathers didn't know the about the kind of weapons we have now. But we'll get there. Uh, yes, actually, when we ended Prohibition, well, it was a constitutional amendment just so we could get our liquor back. But so what I'm getting at here is there was actually uh, Thomas Jefferson's favorite rifle was a 22 shot rifle. I believe it's called the Pendersoli or Pendersoli rifle. You can uh, folks can look it up. And it was a 22 shot rifle that you just had to tip it back hit a button, it would load another round, and it was actually pneumatically charged, and Thomas Jefferson loaned two of these rifles to the Lewis and Clark expedition I know, because I know. they actually used that to defend themselves when they were actually being under heavy assault. It was two people with these rifles up against 40 different people, and they were able to hold position. And then the last thing I'd like to say, a very interesting thing, we were talking about nuclear weapons. I just want you all to think about this and all realize this. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, have lived under a very interesting reality. We have had privately held nuclear weapons since the fall. You can go to Vice News, where they actually do a story on privately bought nuclear warheads on the Bulgarian black market. At the time, about $5 million could get you a warhead with a blast radius of about five okay. miles. Sure. And we have lived under this reality since the 90s. And you will notice... The sky has not fallen upon our heads. So just something to keep in mind when people try to go to this extreme of the privately owned nuclear warhead argument, and you think you're arguing in the abstract. You're actually not. This is something that we've been living under since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And with all of that said, all you beautiful people, I yield back the balance of my time. Got it. I'm actually going to ask, uh, can I ask CTV a question about, just to clarify, I'm not, um, li literally not trying to blow him up here on the nuclear question. <laughs> uh, sure, quick, but it's got to be okay, like a quickly, minute. CTV, so um, are you saying, and I'm just trying to clarify here, I'm, I'm genuinely curious, that constitutionally I have the right to build and maintain a nuclear ordinance and that we need like a constitutional amendment to stop the Revolutionary Council of Cat Girls from getting a hold of a nuke? That is awesome. Like, is this true? <laughs> like, do you think it's constitutionally like, like, do Mike does? Is he muted? Oh my god. Am uh, I muted? Is everyone muted? I hear you. No, I can no, hear, no, you. I hear you. you. I can hear you fine. Hear you? Did he hear me? Oh, Don't hear a critically thinking veteran. I, I think uh, I think I he see. did. Yeah. I yeah, see. I just want to know. I'm curious. I'm yeah, seriously I don't. Curious. I literally, literally don't know what all of that after language was about. And you don't have to worry about but that. But in part. reality, like, like, in reality, from a, are, are you going to wait for the answer or do you just want to try to over talk me? 20 slow. seconds. Right. So, <laughs> so in reality, right, from a principal standpoint, there is no law against it. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, going to, now, okay. Now it's uh, closing statements. Uh, can everybody please keep them short and sweet because we only have an hour left and we haven't even touched minimum wage, which everybody will agree on. Uh, we're going to go to Hutch. Yeah, I just want to open what I said. I appreciated Connor's point. I had to go to the bathroom a little bit. When I came back, he was talking about how the problem is, is I drink multifaceted. Too much it's not it just an, an issue about how do we restrict gun ownership or what sort of guns should we restrict. You also have to address a lot of socioeconomic uh, factors as well. And... Um, and I think this is sort of it's okay. A we got more content left, after where, this. Don't you worry. We always people, do Q and A and debates afterwards. A lot of right wingers so. think that people on the left, for the for, uh, the majority of the people on the left, just want to come in and take everybody's guns. But uh, as far as I can tell, there's nobody on this panel that wants to uh, make make it so that nobody can own a gun. Period. Um, 
Um, and if we're talking about uh, if we're talking about the like CTV's position was that it shouldn't come from the federal government; it should only be the state that that regulates what sort of firearms or like whatever kind of uh, firearm regulation should occur should only occur on the state level. Well, what would happen if Nevada decided tomorrow that you w- that you should be allowed to own an RPG? Or, or actually, you might be able to do that in Nevada. I don't know. If we're talking about like Utah or something like that, if 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 uh, touching on the point that um, Demon Mama made. If you have certain states that allow extremely deadly weapons to, for for personal use, what what are the ramifications for that for neighboring states for the, for the rest of the country? Um, it just seems kind of um, silly to me. But again, I just want to reiterate my point that I don't see a lot of, I personally don't see a lot of hope for much progress on this issue being made because, uh, again, this is just this is not something that most voters prioritize above uh, a lot of other issues that are on the table right now and. Um, I think we can all agree that we want less gun violence. So I think that's kind of a cop-out answer. Bullshit. Okay. Uh, let's make the next ones a lot quicker. Um, uh, no comment check. Yeah, the problem the problem for the libs out there is that, like, you know, they're a lot less, they think they're motivated on the gun issue, but they're a lot less motivated than the right uh, wing. The right wing lives and breathes this issue. I don't anticipate us doing much Hello, progress you know, towards that. And I would frankly say that, like, our attention would be better served addressing police reform uh, before we can uh, even, like, start to worry about that. Because who's going to enforce the gun control? Who's going to do the confiscation? We don't mm. want it to be racist cops. So let's take care of things in the priority yeah, uh, I got order and, and not get ahead of ourselves. My spicy take. Okay. Uh, we're going to get a replacement because we try to keep the balance of four lefties, four righties to make sure it's not unfair for anybody. So we're getting a replacement soon. Uh, next is going to be CTV. All right. So from a uh, principal standpoint, like I said earlier, the Constitution should have been amended at the discovery of the atomic age. Right? So after that... There's no legislation that can be and or should be, from a principal standpoint, be put into place with regard to arms. Doesn't even make any sense. Because second I, I amendment replacement righty. Right. The only way that we'll that can out. change is if you amend the constitution. If you're principled, right? But if you're okay with partisan politics and only caring about your team, right, and not really giving a fuck about the the document itself, then by all means, right, you can go advocate for whatever the fuck you want, right? Everybody can do that. But I would tell you that the best place for you to be doing those things is at the state level or at your county level or at your city level, because I, you know, from all the socialist arguments that I've been hearing over the last few months, you want the control of things to be at the closest level possible to the community in which you're trying to enact some type of good on. Right. So that means that you need the laws and you need them to be understood to be from the individual standpoint. So it brings it back closer to the individual and the community that they're in. Right. So having a government that would be literally five places Yo, away right Adam, in most awesome. cases Thank from the individual so is a pretty far and away place for the type That's of control awesome. that anybody that would be advocating for gun control to be at right Danabo, and notice how a couple of Danabo, right? the lefties here have probably deafened their chat so that their chat doesn't have to hear the truth right so that's kind of where we're at with reality and if you really want something good to happen with your community advocate for it at your local level mm-hmm. and your state level federal gun control is not something that you should be wanting from a principled standpoint because you also would understand that there are a lot of issues across the several states and they have a lot yeah. of different needs so you want that to be closer to the individuals okay now going forward everybody got only 30 seconds because we are now <laughs> under an hour for the last topic okay oh, so man. demon mama 30 seconds yeah uh really appreciate that hutch brought back up the idea of states having a right to protect their own citizens so i think that um federal collaboration is necessary on many issues and i think that guns are an important issue especially in the modern age where you can cross state lines very quickly with a vehicle, which we regulate and license, um, and uh, bring a gun there. Now, do I think the gun should be uh, able to be owned? Absolutely. But we have a absolute epidemic of suicides in this country that does a that does a lot of damage and i do believe that a lot of that is because we have a rampant gun sales culture we have no consistency across the states and it clearly isn't working and a lot of people are dying so we should be safe and be smart so that's all i got to say on this one okay perfect uh straight over to counterpoints 
30 seconds. Bathroom time. Okay, try to be brief. Um, so an earlier point was that the Second Amendment uh, language sucks ass. The Second Amendment is capable of being understood. Gunsite.org, G-U-N-C-I-T-E dot org has a whole bunch of different interpretations. Um, we have a mega violence par uh, problem inside the United States. I disagree with that framing just because I think we have a violence problem compared to developed nations, but I think we're doing pretty well overall. I also think that we can improve. Uh, constitutional uh, originalism is bunk. I disagree. The reason why constitutional amendments shouldn't be repealed, the only time a constitutional amendment should be repealed is if the problem it was meant to address has disappeared. The balance of power between private citizens and the government uh, has not disappeared. It should be remained. Final point, you can't defend yourself against the government. I have have an, uh, a video on my YouTube channel called Asymmetric Warfare Memes for YouTube Moderator and Tanky Teens. Uh, go check it out. It's basically a 20 minute diatribe about uh, the balance of power between private citizens and the government. Yield. Okay. Uh, now we're throwing it over to Trihex. All right. I'll, I'll keep it short. Yeah. Uh, gun violence is a, is a very gun violence and gun fetishization in American culture is definitely an issue. We need to definitely address that as soon as we can. Um, with, with that in mind, I'll, rather than repeating stuff, I'll just go over like what I would advocate for here. Clearly, I would like to see the, uh, universal gun, uh, background checks for gun purchases. I'd like to be able to see, uh, less exploitation of stolen and, um, illegally obtained guns. If we, however, we can address that as quickly and as effectively as possible. Um, I would even argue we can make parallels here to like, again, how we regulate other things of like, of mass killing potential, like vehicles. Maybe we should be reconsidering here the whole paradigm of like insurance regulation on gun on gun ownership. Maybe we should be looking back into like the the idea of curbing the culture by implementing some kind of the exploring idea of voluntary buyback programs for guns Dude, to be able I'm to just lower the amount of gun saturation right now because we're gonna be able to really solve this problem realistically within this century if we don't start doing something dramatic now. Hello everybody, I'm back. But again, this is like a much more bigger know. topic to get Who's into this later guy? on here. So with that, I I I, I don't know I, this person. Okay, um, throwing it over to Phil. Well, folks, I'll keep it very short. Rights are the necessary conditions of one's proper existence. Nothing more, nothing less. You have the right to repel threats to yourself and those that you love and care about. Any state that would infringe upon this right is wrong. And so that's why I would implore you to oppose HR 127 or further gun control efforts in the future. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Okay, and we have a new guest for the last topic on the minimum wage. Their name is Sheepdog TV. Uh, I've been made aware that, but even before I was on Twitch, uh, they were making the rounds on the panel game. Uh, my uh, my uh, good yeah, co-host Anibo made me aware. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? How's it going. Ooh. Hey, what's up, Sheepdog? Nice to meet you. How you been, brother? Nice to meet you. I'm I'm, I'm living. It's beautiful really background. Good. Would you like thank to do you, a quick uh, inter introduction? I, I'm just I'm just your average blue collar dude, center right, left on the I left on some things, um, pretty reasonable, not married to any ideas. Uh, I tried to boost his audio. Just a content creator, man. I'm a blue collar worker, a, hmm. a free man, and a free nation, and I love this country. Wonderful. Right so on. So we're gonna My go sign on to the fell last over. topic, which is the minimum wage. Biden has, of course, proposed that we should be raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour as part of the stimulus. Yep. This, of course, has brought back a lot of debates about what will happen to small businesses, what will happen to workers' wages, what will happen to the economy yeah, generally. Code for I like so, yeah, as always, true we'll start in the top left-hand corner. Then after that, we'll go into an open discussion, and this is the last topic of the show. So, Hutch, you may take us off, uh, and remember, everybody, during opening statements, no interruptions. You will be able to debate this. I have no that. idea. So, Recon. Hutch. You may begin. Seems like it. Yeah, so clearly there are a lot of issues that are plaguing this country right now that require attention and legislation. Uh, but I think probably the most significant one in my mind has been income inequality and how that's g grown nothing but worse and worse for probably like the last five or six decades right now. Uh, and if we go back to Hell the yeah, original Cyborg. intent Thank of you. the minimum wage in 1938, uh, it was to increase the buying power of low-income earners in this country. <clears throat> that was That was the entire reason. And I think uh, I think the, the the arguments for and against a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage um, are sort of divided amongst people who uh, who either believe that anybody that's working in this country, you know, full time job, forty hours a week, should they be afforded the dignity of being able to support themselves or the or, or a family? And then there are pe a lot of people in this country that believe that you know people that sort of flip burgers for a living shouldn't be allowed to 
make as much, you know, make enough money to oh, support themselves. Oh, I think we themselves. totally will be able to. Uh, that wasn't always the case in this country. You used to be able to support like a family of three or four just on a single Yo. income earner uh, working a minimum uh, minimum wage. I will. Sorry, I'm check stumbling this. a little bit. I've been streaming for about eleven hours and I'm getting a little tired. But this is the one topic we'll that I probably feel the most strongly on. Thank out you of for all that. The, all the topics that we've picked, and uh, I'll save the rest of what I have to say for the discussion part. I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say. Wonderful. Next, we're going to throw it over to no comment check. Yeah, I mean, the minimum wage is, um, you know, part of the package, um, you know, that we got uh, so many years ago, part of the, um, you know, part of the whole, um, part of the breadcrumbs, honestly, that we've been thrown in order to um, keep capitalism acceptable. That being said, when people are going hungry, breadcrumbs are, are fucking useful. So, you know, we'll take what we can get. It's a little late and it's a little small and it hasn't kept up with the productivity. Oh so, my if you God, know, Redcon. in this country, there's two graphs. We'll look into it afterwards. And that's the rate of the, the, you know, essentially what the average worker does, the value that the average worker contributes to their employer, right? That graph goes up and up and up and up. There's also um, income and that graph, you know, these graphs went up together. They were like together, together, together. At some point in the 70s, income flattened out productivity kept going up that slice in between there that's what they've been stealing from you okay at the very least you can recognize that that is stolen wealth from the american people he's yeah, painting. i'm glad that they're doing it it's a little he's late. painting it's a, a little figurine. small but i'll figurines. fucking take it and um yeah with that i'll yield back the balance of my time okay next is going to be ctv uh i don't think the federal minimum wage needs to be changed I think that uh, if you're taking a real good look at the, the economies across the nation, if you're not setting a federal minimum wage based off of the very poorest community, you're going to end up – or and then you try to, like, say, attempt an average between all of them. Yeah, we'll look into it in after. some yeah, kind of meaningful sure. way, or I'm, I'm assuming it would try to be, right? You're going to end up – Making it harder for other communities that don't have the business infrastructure there to be able to pay a higher wage, <laughs> and you're going to reduce the amount of businesses that uh, that can actually do business, right? So, I feel like that this is uh, one of those issues where yes, California can, is an Max, example that uh, where they actually have you know local minimum wages for you know county municipalities and cities, and you know they have their own minimum wages based off of what Bloody their local Mac. economy yes. is. And I really, I feel like that this issue, much like gun control, would be something that you'd want to be handled at the more local level that's closest to the constituents. That way, as times change, people change, uh, those laws can be updated to the way that people are now. But if you try to argue for something at the federal level that is uh, unattainable yeah, so for certain states to be able to participate in because they don't have the business infrastructure there to be able to do it, then all you're really going to do is feed corporations. And I know my friend here on the left definitely don't want to be feeding the corporations right because they would be the only ones who would be able to do any kind of business so it seems like that we should be on the same side when it comes to having these things handled at the local or the state level no okay next i'm gonna throw it over to demon mama yeah um i think that it is high time for us to have a 15 dollar minimum wage the minimum wage has uh uh been almost laughably low and americans are paying the price especially as the pandemic has appeared and we realize that um actually americans can't even take time to avoid a horrible deadly illness um we have a serious problem not just with in a, a general income inequality in our country but specifically with the lowest uh the lowest brackets of income being the stickiest in our country i think that we should be much more willing to actually invest in the poorest members of our society because the result will be a better economy in general and the idea that um that a 15 dollar minimum wage will instantly bankrupt all kinds of companies simply isn't true um in fact there's a and and for anyone who doubts it because it is of course somewhat experimental we've never had a 15 dollar minimum wage before in the past except we have tried it in some places like here in seattle here in seattle um we had a five-year 
program by which the uh, $15 minimum wage was worked up to and the uh, difference between what a, what the original minimum wage was and the $15 minimum wage for workers was subsidized by the state. So the state put aside some money and said, all right, businesses, if you're below a certain level, you don't have to jump to this right now. You can work your way up. And it worked great. And it's been fantastic for the economy. These studies can be all accessed publicly on um, the University of Washington's website, and you can learn all about it. But as it turns out, it's been a really, really, really good um, experiment, and I think we should try it on a larger scale, especially because we, our economy is in shambles because of, uh, of COVID and how horribly mishandled it was by the last administration. So I think this is as good of a time as ever, and we should also consider maybe even pushing it higher, because as it turns out, despite all the fear-mongering from, from business people, um, it actually might be really good for businesses, and they might grow as well. Could I throw over to counterpoints? Yep. So this is where I think the right has lost the plot. I am not interested in living in the 19th century. I am not interested in my children working in a fucking pickling factory, losing their fingers to goddamn yep. unregulated fucking machinery. I'm not interested in working 60 hours a week in order to support my fucking family and have my wife working fucking 40 hours a week. I am not interested in my kids being uneducated fucking Walmartian fucking clerks who have to live under the goddamn glare of fucking house halogen lights as they slowly fucking wonder why they're even alive. I am not True. interested in an economy that just works for itself. I am interested in an economy that works for average human beings. I am a Republican because I care about a republic. I care about a republic because I care about the people within that republic. I care about American families. He's that means that I want American families to be able to feed their kids. That means I want them to be able to put, be put through school. That means I want their schools to be high quality. That means that I want them to have access to either vocabulary educational training or high quality education. That means that I want them to be able to start businesses, meaning that I don't want the government to be such a fucking burden that it basically destroys all business. But at the same time, uh, if the studies that Demon Mama brings up display that small businesses can still operate at a wage in which their employees can support themselves financially, then I see anybody who opposes this as a fucking vampire who has been sucked in by ANCAP fucking propaganda True. that's been largely fucking uh, prop propagized since, or propagandized since the 1950s. And I will make one final point and then I'll shut the fuck up for a while. The Make America Great Again movement was based off of boomer mentality, the 1950s and the 1960s. The 1950s and the 1960s economic opportunities were created by redistributive economic programs created in true, the 40s. Though, true, though, so, true. Let's make America great again. Uh, man, I you, love FDR you, too. You were you were swearing like a sailor over there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go it over to bring it over to Trihex. Yeah, uh, obviously I support a uh, $15 minimum wage here, but I would say we can do better than that actually here. The problem here is that we haven't increased the minimum wage since, what, 2007 under Bush's second term. It's been a long ass time now. We've had to incur tons of inflation and some other bullshit. And ultimately here, $15 is not enough on the, on the basis that it needs to be definitely tethered to inflation going forward. That way there's no more like antiquated and other, because we're, we're essentially minimum 10 years overdue for a, for a minimum wage increase federally here. Yep. So what needs to happen is you need to address that like yeah, rotting decay period. So there needs to be from here going forward, definitely make it to where it's like um, tethered to inflation going forward permanently. It's disgusting. On a, I know. On a year yeah. by year basis forever. Make that part of the legislation here if we can possibly. <laughs> but but let's go further here, right? So Florida's already passed. Florida Florida already passed. Whenever there was a direct democracy initiative to ask Florida, the state of Florida, would they want to have their minimum wage increase? It happened. It passed overwhelmingly. I think it was like something like yep. almost seventy percent. So they already have it enacted. Seattle already has it here. I believe Colorado also has it as well. It's already active in They're other places to, yeah. here. The fact that we have a starvation wage where you're being where minimum wage right now is so comically low that you can't you can't actually afford to live in any major metropolis city on minimum wage if you worked full time yeah, he deleted you that have Voltaire, to get a Voltaire. second job you have to Thankfully. overextend yourself you have to extend yourself far past what, what should be a reasonable amount of time and effort it's 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 bonkers it's ridiculous it's insulting and as we were alluding to in earlier uh, portions here yeah it, not only that is 15 dollars not enough not only is it not being tethered to, to, uh, to inflation but Damn. also Damn if we consider God. here that if it was tethered to inflation alone it would actually be Eighteen dollars. If it was tethered to productivity, it would be upwards of twenty-two dollars. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot going on here. And then finally, here 
all the arguments about it, about it, about it crumbling and obliterating small businesses. Well, obviously, how this would be implemented altogether here is you would do it on a slow release basis. Whether you want to call that, you know, a dollar per year or you implement it over the course of four years or five years, you don't do it immediately. And you can obviously scale back and tether and 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 do individual studies to figure out what is the, what is the average cost of living in each state and then apply a different level of speed individually towards it to have an overall mandate of, of it all being implemented within the next four or five or six years, ultimately. So, okay. yeah, I'm enthusiastic for there to be no longer be this, like, starvation, poverty, wage doesn't actually fucking do anything. Okay. I, I'm done. I'm going to throw it over to KOE Nation. Ah, well, thank you. Now, something in this discussion, whenever there's minimum wage discussions, I always find that quite a few people are putting the cart before the horse because you're talking about if it was adjusted to inflation, it'd be $22. Actually, no, not even close. I'm, I got some numbers here for you, folks. In okay. February 1st of 1968, the minimum wage was $1.60. Now, the thing is, under that time, we were under a bimetal standard. You would have been paid $1.60 in silver coinage. Now, the current spot price for one ounce, because one dollar was one ounce of silver. The current spot price is about twenty-seven forty. So a dollar sixty is oh adjusted. Boy, if you we were go. to actually have the still sound money silver standard today, you would be making roughly forty-one dollars and ten cents an hour. That is the amount of purchasing power that has been stolen from you over the last decades, ever since we went off of a sound money standard. So if we're talking about, yes, people are drastically, ridiculously underpaid, but under our current fiat money inflation system, you can make the minimum wage as high as you want. It's any gains that you could possibly perceive are going to be inflated right out from under your feet. So if you want to really benefit the little guy, Advocate for a sound money system. Switch to Bitcoin, you want to right? really fuck over the big timers and the big elites? Advocate for a sound money system. That is actually how you can get to the point where we actually have people working. And yes, actually at the time, in 1968, <sighs> yeah, 85 to 2D we're earning $40 oh, dollars worth of purchasing power. So yes, the, the, the idea that we can't get there, we could, but not without a sound money system. Now I know it's a little bit of a different thought than most people have... Uh, usually encountered but yes under our silver system you are making ridiculously better wages so yield back okay now the last uh intro will be sheepdog and then we'll go into open it's discussion. probably not a diploma it's probably like a gold yeah. buyer's license or something um, so as a guy that uh has run businesses been a supervisor of manufacturer places the the current shop that i work at we we pay people that with no skills they come in as newbies, anywhere from 13 to 14, sometimes $15 an hour, depending on their age and maturity. Why does their age just I live matter? in Texas uh, as a welder fabricator. It's all about the trade. I don't know about other states. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you, go to, you go to a fast oh food God. restaurant, of course, you're not going to make a whole lot of money. But I live in an oil state where you have a choice. You don't have to flip burgers. I realize some people can't drive to a manufacturer. Maybe they ride a bike to work. Maybe they walk. I don't know what most of america transport is like what i could tell you is i've run crews and this some of these drunk. crews at different shops that i run if 15 dollars minimum wage were to hit i'd have to lay off half my crew um supervisors are given a salary cap so when we hire a crew we try to leave a little bit of room so that we can give people raises after their 90 day reviews mm. so if i have a salary cap um of 200 let's say Let's say I have a salary cap of a million dollars for my crew. I'm not going to budge past 900,000 within my crew. That way I have room to give people raises. But in some of these smaller shops that I worked at, if they were to make the minimum wage $15 an hour, I have to lay off half my fucking crew because there goes my salary cap. Another problem with uh, a $15 minimum wage, not saying that it's not a great idea. I, I do want American people to be able to pay their bills, take care of their children. That That's all great and dandy. I get it. But at the end of the day, this little burger joint in my town employs five people, six people top on their crew. It's a really small little burger shack. Uh, if they have to pay all their employees $15 an hour, and this isn't a, a place that makes a whole lot of money. This is a retired guy just trying to keep his lights on. Okay. 
really tiny shack with like six tables. If he has to play his employees $15 an hour, not only will he probably go out of business, but your little $10 burger and fries and a drink is now a $25 burger, fries, and a drink. So at the end of the day, you're like, hey, yeah, we're making $15 an hour. There's no but evidence now you're gonna to support that. You're going to pay more for everything. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's never, ever going to just hit the corporation and be at the cost of the corporation. Anytime a business or a corporation takes a financial hit this per is se, so like, stupid. like you know 15 dollars minimum minimum wage it's not, it, the employees are the ones that are going to the suffer a lot of them are going to get laid off nope and also wrong whatever your service wrong. is you got to increase the cost of it wrong maybe your service is uh manufacturing insulin you know maybe your maybe your business is making a life saving drug and <laughs> The people, the customers, are the ones that get take a hit. So the customer that just got fifteen dollars an hour now has to pay twice the amount for their medication, and that goes for every industry across the board. Please every let me go next. Oh my board. god! And that's not to even talk about really small business like these lawn services in Texas that employ like five fucking people, five people. You know, they charge fifty dollars to mow a lawn, and they got five people doing it. They have a certain amount of time they got to bang it out. Now you have to fire half your fucking guys because you can't afford to pay them. There's I'm no sorry. profit margin. So if they're going to raise the main, the minimum wage to $15 an hour, there's a whole bunch of other things they have to do as well. You can't just say all businesses, $15 an hour. You can't do that. There's a whole bunch yes, of other you actually things can. that have to happen you actually can. that make this extremely fucking complicated. It's not just as simple as raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Your little $3 gallon of milk is going to turn into a $7 gallon of milk. Maybe my math is wrong there, but prices of everything go up if you got to pay your employees more. Okay, let's get into the open discussion. All right. Yeah. Uh, basically, everything Sheepdog TV said was just uh, in, it, not correct at all. The idea yeah. that if you raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars, that you're going to have twenty dollars per burger is the most ridiculous, like exaggeration I can possibly imagine. Like. That doesn't even make sense on a mathematical level. You'd sell thousands of burgers at twenty dollars all of a sudden, jumping up from six dollars. That's well, stupid. This, no, that, come this, on, that's like no, 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 dude, dude, come on. That's so this dishonest. Place, it's this, ridiculous. It's, this isn't like a corporation fast food restaurant. It, the, it's not a. Fa this is a small mom and pop business that literally might do, might do. You're on a you're good making day, up. You're literally dollars. proposing like. This is like magical thinking. This is fantasy. You're saying like a, an imagined burger shop imagine might also no, raise. No, it's, it's, a, it's ridiculous. It's a, it's a that, there's choice. no data for this. There's no all of the studies show that actually it's really good for the economy. In fact, because here's the thing: as it is right now, people studies who are, from where? Where's your sources? Yeah, I, I already told you them. You can go look them all up on the University of Washington. Our okay. st my state. Hey. The, and, and my city, Seattle, has done a widespread experiment on this, and it's extremely well if documented. You have five now, hold on. Now, hold on. Now, it's my turn to talk, dude. Hour, Listen, you got to go on your you're rambling, you're incoherent right. rant, and now it's my turn to respond, okay? <laughs> Okay. Now, you I, have listen, floor, I just baby. get really tired when you people lie floor. really confidently, and this is starting to irritate lying. me. Yeah, it is. I'm yeah, you are. Lying. You're yeah, literally okay, okay, just okay, making okay, up. Okay, okay, okay. Can I, can me, I finish my thing? Because yeah, he interrupted me, me like six times. Give me a moment. Yeah, 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 do your thing. I'm, I'm out of it. I'm not even listening to you anymore. Okay, 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 okay. He just admits that part now. Let me clarify a rule for the last time. Um, When I talk, no one else talks. Now it will just be mutes. Uh, this is the third time it's, it's happened, uh, so it will just be mutes going forward on that specific role. Now, uh, Demon Mama, you can respond, but I just want to make clear to everybody that when two people are talking over each other, da -da -da, da -da -da, again, nobody gains anything. Nobody hears your point. So, Demon I Mama, agree. you can go. Yes, thank you, Dylan. I agree. I wish people would not talk over me as much. Um, the uh, the uh, fact of the matter is that um, right now, as it stands, with our disgustingly low minimum wage there are people whose entire income and more mind you usually because they have multiple jobs tons of americans have two to three jobs these days sometimes gig economy jobs their money goes to rent their money never goes back into the economy it just goes to rent and that goes to the landlords and that's it you bump that up to 15 dollars minimum wage all of a sudden they can afford to buy a burger oh maybe the burger cost goes up from six dollars to six dollars and fifty cents Oh, but wait a minute. More people can actually buy the cheeseburger, which means the business makes a lot more money because those people who are working for 15 bucks an hour can make a thousand cheeseburgers an hour, all of which are now selling for 650. 
And guess what? People can afford their rent. It goes all over the place. We know this is the case. And the funny thing is that we're like the only country in the world that's even having having this debate. Um, every other uh, like like on par nation with a strong a strong economy knows that you have to pay your workers a fair amount or else they can't participate in the economy. What we have in America is an is a a ocean of n damn near slave labor that the that. Sorry, but mostly the Republicans have kept completely locked in position and people like yourself using weird magical fantasy thinking um, just propose like in invisible burger shops that might or might not exist as a reason to keep almost all of America in poverty. Do you realize that we couldn't weather even the smallest bit of this pandemic because no one in America has fucking savings? The state of the economy in America, the state of poor people in America is horrible. And all we get is these random anecdotes about a burger shop and the poor and the poor guy who won't be able to do business, even though more people would be buying his fucking burgers. Also, if you're running a shop where you can't afford to pay above slave labor, maybe you should restructure your shop because I think somebody might be skimming some money off the top somewhere. <sighs> Even Mama, didn't like the University of Washington do a study on the, uh, yes, the implementation of the Seattle? I feel like this legislation is getting vastly mischaracterized. It's not just like, you know, raise the minimum wage, five head. It's like a lot more complicated. Yeah. It's, you, can, can you go into that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I the, can. The know... way that it worked is that if you're a business under a certain uh, under a certain level, aka if you're not Amazon, because Amazon is huge in the state, basically, if you're a small business that can't afford to work up to the minimum, to the $15 minimum wage, there's a five, uh, five year sliding scale where it ticks up each year and in the meantime the government put aside a fund of money from the massive amount of taxes that we're getting from now how much uh how much uh business is coming into the state and then they fill up the difference so you pay whatever that year's minimum wage is it ticks up the next year and the government gives the worker the money in between and guess what as it turns out that buffer made more than enough time for the money to start circulating back into the economy and these businesses thrived not only did they not do worse they thrived Arrived. They did well. The they burgers did really are not well. Twenty-five fuck. Burgers are not twenty-five fucking dollars in Seattle. They were saying no. They're there were great. A there are a lot of economists that were war that were warning against like massive massive rates of inflation with the implementation of the fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage in places like Portland and Seattle. It didn't fucking happen. There, you're going to have some loss of jobs, yes, but you're going to lift a lot of people out of poverty. And I'm I'm sort of fine with businesses becoming obsolete if they can't. I really afford. feel like they no, no, Phil did a good wait, job of moment. understanding silver. Right, and we literally just ran over that with regard I mean, to inflation. Who, uh, honestly, one, moment, one, moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one um, moment. Mama, I do want to say you're just straight up wrong. Uh, sure. Burgers in L.A. are not great. Uh, they're subpar at <laughs> that, best. Well, I LA said burgers. Burgers. L.A. Wait, wait, last I checked, L.A. is in Washington. That's California. It's all the, the all the all Seattle the has coast, fucking okay? god tier burgers. Of its, all of its, all of its all burgers suck. California, oh, California, California, Washington, all of its garbage. East Coast has best burgers. It's always been the fact. Okay, East Coast right. in the South, best burgers. Nebraska, Shake Shack is way better than In-N-Out Burger. Oh. Sorry, get over it, people. Oh. If I may, if I may, uh, there is one thing that I found kind of interesting. Like, um, I forget who said it, and there's been some odd pushback on it, but ultimately, all costs will be ultimately passed on to the customer if costs have been increased in any way. Nope. I'm sorry, that's just how business works. Wrong. Like you can nod your head, no. Wrong. Yeah, sorry, that's all, all costs, Wrong. every one of them will ultimately be passed on to the customer. I need this, I need this so bad. Okay, okay Connor, <laughs> I want to rebuttal to that. I you, right after. Tell me, that, tell me yep. why my no business worries. doesn't work. Later. Right after <laughs> Connor, right after okay. Connor. Connor, okay. you, then we got to go so. to uh, Try and K, uh, so. Phil, okay. So I'm I'm actually gonna take take a more extreme position. I want to abolish the minimum wage entirely, and I want the return of unions. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Sheepdog brought up an anecdote, but I'll address this anecdote, which is basically that hey, there's a mom and pop shop, they got five employees, and they they basically they they basically think that if they raise their wages, that they're not going to be able to maintain the shop. A unionized workforce could make the decision on, we literally understand the budget. We understand that this is a mom and pop business. This is part of your, your family's legacy. We want to help with that project. As a result, we will accept ABC wages so we can keep the lights on. And then that business can perpetuate. And then um, KOE, just to address you directly, um, Denmark actually has a similar uh, social Cheap setup to what I'm here. talking about, where there isn't a minimum... Work. 
th there is there is no minimum wage, uh, but the average wages for fast food employees is twenty two dollars an hour. The difference in the uh, the difference <laughs> in the price of fight. the burger is like a dollar. Now maybe they're offsetting costs by their criminal fucking profits in other countries. But at the same time, like we, we're not getting past the moral question of whether yes. or not average people no, he's should been be subjected down, to Peterson. what amounts to slave he's good labor. When he's calm. And here's the thing, the conservative, the conservative fucking uh, point on this, which I subscribed to probably five years ago, was get good loser. That's literally it. Yes, bootstrap it is. your fucking way out of out of society, like yep. bootstrap your way out of a age. Stop being a piece of shit. But at the same time, you have to understand that we're all fucking brainiacs. We all have 2000 IQs. We're all fucking, you know, going to be multimillionaires by the end of this podcast. Um, so so basically we're in a privileged position. True. Don't know is always. But there are people who have to fucking pick the food. They have to fucking, uh, you know, shuffle the food for you. They have to fucking prep a farmer. They have to drive trucks. So it, it's a moral question. Should these people work for That's slave awesome. wages and slave hours, never hang out with their children, be so exhausted that they don't fucking get to spend time with their family, send their fucking kids to sub shitty schools, or should we find a better way to structure the economy? That's no, a fundamental Redcon, question that you have. That's to why answer. you should advocate for sound money, my man. And then we'd be uh, right there. I can, I, okay, I'll, I'll, monopolize, yeah. I'll, I'll monopolize time. So, so sorry, but going to a fiat currency, I understand what you're saying with the fucking, you know, basically having a gold standard or the fucking silver standard, all that shit. But at the same time, going to a fiat, a fiat fucking currency has its advantages. So for instance, yeah. in times war. of crisis or war, you can you can basically use inflationary and deflationary fucking money in order to fucking manage the economy. We exactly. it's a it's a completely it's different subject that we would have to fight about probably for about an hour. That's why I do advocate for it because then governments can't fund war so easily. So, bravo! Yes, fucking a right. I love this guy. Where have you been hiding this guy? So far? I love him. He's been so, hiding on he's been hiding on lefty panels. That's where he's been hiding. Ah, on. God, we, we need to bring him back. We need to bring him back. He's been straying a little too far to the right. Don't worry, man. We'll get your political. Guys, <laughs> yeah, making America work. great, man. Uh, he, doesn't want, he doesn't want like half the country uh, being fucking poverty. Next, America next is wow, what a what a radical uh, what a radical. Neither do I. I want actually nice higher world. minimum wage, and anybody who's even proposed on this panel just through sound money. I want the average worker to go away with forty one dollars. You want somebody trying to scam me here? I don't know if I trust you. I don't know if I trust you. Sounds like a Bitcoin hustle. This sounds like a scam to me. This sounds like a scam. I feel like I'm gonna get like, ripped off here. To, Come on, to, how can you not trust this face? To, to be fair, I Chris feel like KOE, KOE, to be fair about KOE, he does kind of feel like the guy who could sell an Uzi to the PLA. I mean, he does feel like the type of guy who could like- True. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, but he's, flattery will get you nowhere, sir. My God. We are. Uh, we uh, we next are is going to be, uh, it was Sheepdog, and then we're going to go to Try. You did, okay. Sathers. Right. Yes. Wait, was this open discussion? You you said you wanted to comment next. I was just yeah, I don't forgot you. what the fuck I was gonna say. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, then we'll, we'll just throw oh, it over let the me hop in then. Yeah, skip me, me and in. come back. Skip me and come back. Diplomatic love. Fair enough. Am I up next? Yeah, do it. Oh, bro. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It's all you, bro. Oh, so, so sheep dog. Yeah, you're you're concerned about the um about if minimum wage went up to fifteen dollars an hour or something or somewhere in that spectrum and that and you'd have like fair, these, these ludicrous I'm not prices. An economist, and all okay, I'm just a fucking. Well oh no, baby, I'm not here to. I'm a moron. I do miss the. I'm not. I'm not sometimes. here to attack you. I'm here to like uh, help do. realign. Yeah. There so might be I feel like YouTube the one thing you're focused on there is like a like a pivot reaction to like wages suddenly going over 200 percent overnight. When in reality, these policy implementations would happen over a over a time span. For example, let's go over the one that actually already happened. Florida in the 2020 general election had a direct democracy That's ballot true. to have the minimum wage increase from whatever the fuck it was now to. 15 bucks an yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, true. And their specification of that is that it would happen over the course of five years, $1 per hour. So I believe it was already at 10 bucks an hour. If I'm, if I'm Florida, Floridians, help me out here if I'm correct on that one. So ultimately, I, there won't even be at $15 an hour on their own state mandated minimum wage until, help me out here, what, 2025? November 2025? It, it was a five so, year implementation. Yeah, it's going to give them, so it'll be, a, you know, it'll be 11, then it'll be 12, et cetera here. So that time delay, that that staggered release of, of, of wage increases will allow all those things you, that you're fearing with the insane like reactionary price hikes on everything proportional to the wage increase suddenly not going to happen 
And even then, again, if the federal minimum wage, you look at the how it, how it was implemented under Bush administration, where we went from 515 to 550 to whatever, 685 to then 725. Those were three staggered releases of minimum wage increase over the course of three years. Um, so ultimately, yeah, what you would do is you would allow a delayed basis to uh, to give everyone time to catch up and appropriately uh, adjust. That would, it wouldn't be like this, you know, this big old pivot instead. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I would more relinquish the uh, the worry of like how things will be priced around it, and rather fixate on what what is the minimum needed spending power to be as being a full time working class American in this country at four dollars an hour. What is the minimum any American at this point should be making at, at 40 hours a week? Should Americans have to get multiple jobs working? In some cases, if you're doing a full-time 40 and then an additional gig economy of Uber, should you be working 85 hours a week and still have nothing saved and, and, and throwing it all to your landlord? Is that really the American way? Yeah, we That's do. something yes, I more would want you to evaluate and yes, talk, talk about. Sometimes I work 65, 75, and on extreme measures 80 hours a week but it's not necessarily because i'm chasing sure. a dollar bill it's because i'm loyal to the people i work to and we got work to get done but i think like back to what ctv said man i think it should be at a local level and i like the idea of like slowly doing it like i agree with some of the stuff demon mama said it Thank makes you. sense to slowly do it over a few years span to give the businesses the time to catch up and adjust and to financially get ready and if you and that goes back to what i said saying like there's a whole bunch of other things that need to happen if you're going to make it 15 an hour you know what i'm saying but wait wait if, if you're much. loyal but i have to ask now though so if you're loyal it's like what well, you're on, being paid here is but like really really relevant what, then right what if you're in, a, like, a in small the future not right now Zoltoid, but in the future just sure. a few I can't businesses do it right now, within like maybe somebody on the server can help miles. you are we gonna like make these businesses straight up disappear off off the I know Gayfesh probably has because some because they can't afford to pay people fifteen dollars an hour. Like, look, let's talk about well, some small towns no, in wait, Louisiana so, where there's like one store within like seventy five square miles. Yeah, and that one store is Walmart because they they wiped out all no, the other no, mom no, and pop no, 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 in the no. first place here. No, you never drove across the country where you drive like a hundred miles and there's no stores. I have. So, so you're, you're yeah, asking I, me if the I, I, of a small I, business. I don't. I, I don't usually comment, but I believe there was recently a congressional report on the issue. Am I right yeah. about this? The CBO, that was basic, yeah. yeah, basically, and, and I, the like, CB, give me a moment here. I'm, I'm the CBO sorry, basically ended up saying that a lot of workers would get wage increases because of this. There would also be, I believe it was 0 0.9 million jobs lost, which amounts to 900,000 jobs. This was the uh, conclusion from the CBO. Of course, you could disagree with the CBO, but I just wanted to throw that out there for debate since that's a congressional budget. Can I comment on that? Sure. Yeah, yes, because uh, I can give you a little bit of um, there's a little bit more um, context to that. That number um, also included um, unwanted jobs, a.k.a. people who would quit their job because they no longer need to work work two jobs, which was discussed yeah. pretty extensively um, in numerous analysis of the of the C CBO report. I always forget the acronym. Um, but yeah, a lot of that a lot of that job loss is in unwanted jobs, a.k.a. people no longer having to work Uber jobs people quitting their mcdonald's uh, night shift because they no longer need to work that anymore and, and that's I, actually weatherable yep. very easily and i, I want to piggyback i want to piggyback off of this too um so so for instance like uh some of the projections that um you know uh, republicans were using because republicans are the country club fucking party i hate fucking saying it but it is um so some of the projections that they were using, Ted Cruz fucking tweeted, oh, well, we're going to lose fucking, you know, two million or, or like fucking 20 million fucking jobs or whatever. What he failed to include in that is that that was a decades long projection off of projected growth. So these jobs don't even fucking exist. These are just jobs that would have been created by the surplus fucking uh, profits that these companies pocketed rather than paying to their employees that they would then reinvest in order to creating more shitty jobs. So like, here, here's my fucking thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a moral calculation. Automation is on the way. Fusion technology is probably on the way. 
Nuclear is already a thing, nuclear power. Renewable is on the way. Um, basically, all of these things are going to start a, a, a cascade. We, we are effectively in a new industrial age. So, so between like 1870 and 1920 inside the United States of America, 90% uh, in 1870, 90% of people were working inside of agriculture. And by 1920, 10% of people were working in agriculture. We're effectively looking at a similarly, uh, similarly culturally cataclysmic event with the advent of the information age. Now, it doesn't have to be a permanent cataclysm. What can happen is we can say, what do we do with uh, automation? What do we do with fusion technology? What do we do with nuclear? What do we do with all this kind of stuff? And if the answer is, if you can't find a good job, just be a fucking slave or a gangster, that's not the fucking society that I want to create. That's not the society that I'm fucking interested in. I would like to see some redistributive economics to make sure that American families are actually happy and healthy. And one more point before I shut up. I have a child. I am only going to have a second child because I can't afford a third. Plenty of people are making this calculation, including plenty of millennials who say, I can't afford a child at all. Therefore, I'm not going to have one. You are effectively ending bloodlines because of slave wages. I am not interested in that society. Are you sure you're center right, bud? I I can fight I can scream with fucking demon mama for like forty minutes straight. I think she can attest to that. True. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stay center right because I can I can fight everybody all the time. I mean I do I do oh, yeah, if I may. Yes, uh, it's Phil Stern was... Connor's world. Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, Phil kidding. is listed next. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, I, I will just say it's a, kind of a joke that we have here in Nebraska. Waiting till you got enough money to have kids is just a good way to not have kids. Uh, God, I don't think I, I've met a single person that was like, oh, God, we've got all the money lined up. It's it's good to go. Let's have a kid. It always seems to be kind of a financial surprise. Uh, at least it is around here. But uh, now you did touch on something about fusion power. Fusion, I am a huge nerd on that kind of stuff. The minute we hit fusion power, our species is taking off. We can start actually colonizing the solar system. We can start looking into, it's going to be the biggest revolution wish, of our species. And it's why, like, renewables are nice, but once we hit fusion power, you almost don't need it. Like, it's almost, it's a nice to have, not a need to have. So I am very much looking forward to that day. God, Guys, I hope I live to see it. But in regards to, you also touched on automation. Um, that is something that is coming down the pike, folks. Uh, trust me, a lot of folks in my industry are turning to automation. The higher the wages hike and the higher the costs, because one of the most dangerous things you can do in this country is hire someone. Because it opens you and exposes you to all levels of lawsuits. So you are you have all kinds of legal horseshit that can fall on your head just Thank from you, hiring somebody. Duty, so the more costly and the more onerous that gets, the more businesses are going to invest in automation. It's just going to happen. And with that, I yield back to you beautiful people. Okay, next is going to be Demon Mama. And Demon Mama, when I like raise my notebook, it's like, it signifies that I like wrote your name down. You don't need to like... Take the Pledge of Allegiance every time, like you need I to... just didn't see. Good That's student fine. class. Just kept the hand on. Good mm -hmm. student class. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's a comfortable position for me. Um, so I don't okay. really care. Um, yeah. Uh, so you know, yes, we have had many disagreements, Connor, but on this particular one, we are in full agreement. I think we talked about this on another panel, um, relatively recently. In fact, I think that it's a uh, almost yeah. inexpressible shame that we fear technological adva advancement in America. In fact, there's f like there's uh, fear-mongering articles about automation all the time. Why should we be afraid of automation? And and what's worse is why are we all so afraid of a number of technologies uh that threaten to bankrupt our economy because it will put everybody out of work? What kind of upside down system do we have? That is absurd. And it is the mentality of being afraid of $15 minimum wages. It is the mentality of being afraid of stimulus packages. It is a it is the mentality that says that we need to be afraid of taking, you know, common sense precautions against a plague um, that, that, that leads us to being scared of technology. And also it's the fact that we have a grossly underprepared um, legal and copyright and patent systems, uh, patent systems that, that make it so that we have to completely fear the newest technologies that are coming 
technologies that could advance humanity to the next uh to the next era it, it it's it's um it's sad yeah, yeah and we're holding ourselves that? back i mean yeah i mean i, I don't want to uh bigfoot anybody but like can i jump on board that that point yeah like this is what i always talk about like technology and automation can either be our best friend or our worst enemy it's either going to make it heaven or hell it's going to be heaven if we control that automation if we control that technology if what it does is frees us up to do more things with our minds and to create more because that's what we want to do as human beings we don't like to do menial jobs we like to create right it's going to be terrible though if we get there and the accumulated power on the side of capital is so much greater than anyone else's. That's the situation we're in right now. And that is the danger. We don't own the automation. We don't own the technology. We don't own the means of production. And I'm going to say it right now. As long as we don't, that's a danger. And we're, we're thrusting ourselves into a potential hell that could be a heaven if we just take uh, control of our own destiny. How about that, shot? Okay, uh, Connor, you were Connor. Well, yeah. I mean, right now, there's not a lot of people raising their hand. You can just go into it. You don't need to yeah, raise yeah. your hand. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and then, this, Con. Wow, this is why so I much, won't Con. claim the label of the <laughs> left at all. Be, because basically, like, I am skeptical of socialism. I am skeptical of communism. I am skeptical of all, of, like, it being a panacea to solve all of uh, society's ills. Um, I'm a mixed economy capitalist, and while, I, while I'm okay with, like, redistributive economics, a reasonable living wage, building American families, th this... The fact that this is like saying that I don't want Americans, working class Americans to work exclusively for slave wages. The fact that that's a partisan issue is actually fucking depressing to me. And the per one of my favorite fucking political heroes is Theodore fucking Roosevelt, who need I fucking remind people. He had a few like uh, ra he had a few racist uh, edgy things, but he was also an environmentalist. He was somebody who cared about the environment. He was somebody who cared about the national park system. He was somebody who cared about his fucking country. And he fucking he advocated for the people inside his country. So being a Republican can mean that you care about a republic. It can mean that you're uh, fis fiscally conservative in some constraints. But the reason why I'm fiscally conservative isn't because I want to use it as a fucking cudgel to beat up fucking poor people. The reason why I'm fiscally conservative is because I want to make sure that I invest in the human beings inside my country, enable them to take, uh, take uh, we, we talk about equality of opportunity on the right. I want to create real equality of opportunity, real quality education, real economic opportunities that then allow people to have healthy, happy, productive lives. So Sheepdog, you brought up the fact that you're um, just through the, not the kindness of your heart, but through a loyalty to your company, you will work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, a week. I find that incredibly noble. I, I find it admirable. I am not a hater of the Protestant work ethic or the Christian work ethic. However, what I would cite to you as a fellow hey, what boomer. Fuck? Protestant what, what, Christian work ethic, man. I just do it because you got to get work done. Right? Okay, well, let, let's, if, let's if we just don't say get the this. job done, people don't get paid. Payroll doesn't get made. Lights okay, but okay, shot, so you know. so I admire your work ethic regardless of where it originates, okay? But my point to you as a fellow boomer is that if you have children or if you have family, you are not getting that time back. And that is why I advocate for a fucking work-life balance because I want to see my kid grow up, I want to spend time with him on weekends, and I want every fucking American to have the same thing. Also, to continue off of that, I, I, I noticed that KOE... The KOE brought up um, brought up the idea of us like colonizing space, which I, I would love if we could expand our reach into the stars. But it doesn't really look like we have figured out enough social problems to be able to do that. Right now, we have like people like Elon Musk um, going online and talking about how he wants to do an in a contract indentured servant program for his Mars colonies. Um, that's nightmarish. And that is like people go on Reddit will just like clap like seals for that. And it's just like, what is the state of, of the understanding of the value of human life? The understanding of human labor in our country is just pathetic. It's because I don't know, we've we've become so owned by by massive wealth hoarding that we don't even have a value of labor anymore, that people can go and work eight hour weeks and get nothing for it, that they have to do that just to scrape by and then maybe scooch into their home at night and catch one episode of The Mandalorian or something like that before they have to get up and do it all over again. It's like we, we really need to rethink the way that we approach uh, the value of labor and the value of humans. Like, yeah. what what happened? What happened to the world that we started to just think of humans as, like, human capital stock, as the Republicans yeah, the who go on, on international news will say? It's, it's terrifying, honestly. And I really oh, wish that for all of the people out there listening now, 
take a look and think about the fact that our country is a a is currently a lattice work of 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 fiefdoms of of tiny feudalistic authoritarian businesses that offer nothing back to their employees and exploit them to the maximum degree we have to think harder and i think that the the 15 dollar minimum wage is the first part of this and interestingly though i don't oppose a 15 dollar minimum wage i actually really like the idea that connor pitched earlier which is let's get some union power back in this fucking country oh boy now oh, I, I, I i do have to say in uh in response to that, you know, if you don't like Elon Musk's perspective and how he's going about colonizing Mars, then I do encourage uh, other people. Your, to your, mic, your, your, mic, your, your mic started going robotic. Ah, can you hear me clear now as a good. summer day now? now ah, good, like a spring, like a spring breeze. So uh, I will say, if you don't like the perspective that Elon Musk or some like him are taking, then folks, you need to start to band together, start looking into some movements, and start colonizing, start colonizing space your own self, start making plans to get there. Because if you don't, people with the drive of Elon Musk are going to be the people that oh, okay. pretty much colonize our entire galaxy. So that's what people have the drive to do that are going to get there so yeah can i, you don't can I just like hop it, in on that real quick because um I'll, is this I'll, a low rent nietzsche being yeah, sold yeah. to us here i, would, I don't know I what would, i'm give me, hearing give me a moment give me a, give me a moment okay so phil you your, your mic go for it. Give, me a give me a moment i said again when i talk to my i'll talk okay so phil your mic keeps going robotic and nobody can really hear what you're you're saying so if you could just fiddle a little bit with it and see if you could make some progress on that, appreciate it. Um, so, okay. So does anybody want to take? Yeah, I'd like to, to take a look at that. I mean, this is this is such a oh god, this is a real big chungus moment here. Um, like the fact of the matter is that um, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is the heir to an emerald mine fortune. Like this is so silly. What it what I don't know. This is such a dated way of looking at the world. Like the idea that like Elon Musk is some kind of like ingenious driven inventor. The dude bought every single so-called invention that he's done, including Tesla, by the way, bought it he didn't invent shit this guy has not invented anything like ever he just has a fuckload of money because of he had a lot to begin with literally came to america with a fucking emerald in his pocket kind of bullshit so this guy started with money and he still has money and that's how most of america goes it, america america does not reward people for hard work i've worked hard my entire goddamn life do you know i spent the last decade working fucking slave hours for slave wages and guess what Ah. Uh, not the richer for it. Uh, that's just the way that it goes. America doesn't reward hard work right now. America rewards people who already have money. And we should change that. We shouldn't have it possible for people to be sitting on enough wealth that they counter that of the, the, the wealth of small nations. That's a ridiculous waste. There are people starving. There are people dying. There are people without homes. And there are luxury empty apartments across the street that are protected by a police force that will crack your skull if you don't want to die. That's ridiculous. Can we still say cuck? Those rich people are trying to get to space, though. Can you hear me, though? Can Can everybody hear me a little bit better? I can hear you. I'm going to yeah. legit so, well, those you rich people are trying to get Spring breeze. Better or not. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Better For better or for worse, those are the people that are trying to get us into outer space. And I say God bless them for it. If they get us to the point where we're an interplanetary species a little faster, however they do it, I don't really care. You are because going to be a slave. You're going to be in a human zoo on Mars. I have not yielded. Uh, if we can get to be an interplanetary species, then we cannot go extinct. We effectively can no longer go extinct as a species what? if we become interplanetary. So I don't care how you we yield to really... Demon Mama, but it sounds like you yielded to Elon Musk and he's your daddy or something. What the ah, fuck? Ben you Ben want Ward, to be under his Oh, Adam, if you can get there. Listen, I'm hey, so sorry. Listen, I'm just. Hey, KOE Nation. KOE Nation, man. Send me your, your address on Discord so I can send you one of these microphones, bro. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I have a higher standard for the future of humanity than uh, one dude, uh, one dude who can spout like Elon, like Elon Musk, epic Reddit bacon, um, uh, Keanu Reeves memes on Twitter gets to gets to have an army of slaves in a human zoo on Mars. And you're like, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to clap that guy on the back. Nah, you know what? 
I think we got I think we got some better ideas. Let's tax the hell out of that bastard and let's all go to the stars. Because guess what? He can come with us too. He just can't have an army of slaves mining uh uh Mars crystals so that he can live in a giant crystal palace while everyone else uh, dies and gets mutations. Like I don't know. When did America come in, when did America become a country of a bunch of like when did America become a country of such cowed people? When did America Such become a country cocks. of people who, yeah, co of cocks? When did America become a country does. where we bend over and just say, oh, happens. Elon, please, please put me in your start. slave mine. I would love God. to go on your slave ship and work as an indentured servant until I die crushed by a fucking red rock on Mars. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Little wait, wait, everybody, can I, can I hop it now? Can I hop it now? Why is yeah, she yeah. so angry all the time? Can I, I want to go in further here because, Sorry, like, well, that's literally her stick, like, sheepdog. She's just literally mad all the time. That's maybe I'm, wait a minute, hold on a part, second. Right? You're both taking hey, shots at me. It, hey, have you considered edible. maybe? Have you have you considered maybe? <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Have you have you have, have you, you considered that? Excuse CTV? me. Excuse me. Have you have you considered that maybe? <laughs> all right. Almost. Have you considered the fact that maybe I'm tired of watching uh, the people I care about suffer? Are you? Have you considered that maybe I'm tired of knowing every single every single trans person that I know uh, to be forced into the the worst jobs imaginable or not no jobs at all? Have you considered that maybe um, almost every person I know has lost their job throughout this pandemic and is hurting because of that? Maybe there's a fucking reason why I'm angry. The reason that I'm angry is because 400,000, 460,000 Americans are dead and we can't even and we can't even get it together. Together, do you to raise the minimum wage shut the fuck up please do you think you're special okay, uh, this i want to get it look look this is ridiculous okay, uh, literally I, I, every I, I, time I, I, i've talked i've been talked over by these people right. and then i you get yelled be at. angry right you okay we've muted we've muted we've muted this discussion because this is not productive not helping anyone excuse so me it's completely shut down can I, can I jump in for a second? Um, and Is and I was trying to hand it over to Trihex before, so it's gonna be handed over to Trihex. Then we're gonna wrap it up because it's at the eleven thirty mark anyway. Okay. Awesome, awesome. I was gonna actually piggyback off of uh Demon Mama's point about how 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 fucked we are as as like disposable human capital slash cattle because we can go back here nice. to anecdotal here or not anecdotal, just like actually past history here. April once. The 15 days stop the spread from from Mike Pence and all the other bullshit we heard in the in the March 13 um, uh, keynote about the initial um, uh, state of emergency de declaration for the coronavirus happened. Once we didn't get anything under control by you know 15 days stop the spread and all that happened, and then all all the all the shitheads pivoted the point now to okay, well you know what you got to go out there and keep our economy going because everything's gonna fall apart now. So you have to be a patriot. And go out and get the virus and fuck it. If you're old, go shopping and go out and go indoor dining anyway. And if you die, cool, you died a patriot. Yes, the normalization of the catalyzation of American consumerism has yep. been a thing for a hot fucking minute now. No, and it's I'm not. completely demoralizing and depressing in that it's so ingrained in our fucking culture that people will happily go simp for Elon Musk to go fucking die on an experimental mission to Mars while he continues to make insane obscene amounts of wealth they can't even spend all in his fucking lifetime yeah it's fucking terrible and depressing that's one to piggyback off of her her point is all i'm done okay uh we are at the 11 30 mark and i did not ask for anybody to be here past 11 30 so i'm not going to hold people for four hours of debate that'd be ridiculous so we're going to do wrap up um we're going to start in the top left hand corner as always with hutch you can do your outro and you can shout yourself out yeah so as much as i want to talk about elon musk and and uh Mars colonies. I just want to like, we haven't touched on it yet during this discussion. I just want to throw a pitch out there that people that flip burgers, that is honorable work. I worked in the food industry for years, uh, in my good. teens and in my twenties, uh, uh, for the most part, alongside Spanish speaking immigrants. I've never seen work ethic like that in my life. I, I can't think of, I mean, there's not too many other honorable or more honorable positions than feeding people. And I think that no matter what you do in this country, uh, and I'm sure this is something that probably most of us agree on on this panel. No matter what you do, if you work a 40-hour work week, and we can debate whether that should be 30 or 35 or 40 hours, you should be given the dignity of being able to support yourself and ideally even maybe a wife and awesome. a kid or a husband and Thanks, a kid or something Cyborg. like that at the same time. Uh, but when we talk about, like, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people in this country that they, that, like, part of the part of the part of the way that they measure their own value. It's almost over. Just drop the links. Drop them. the links when and we so do the uh, outro. Of people and that's that work it. In Just make sure like everybody's ready. Industry as a as a means to sort of prop their own ego up, and I think it's pretty reprehensible. Uh, I've never I've never ever in my life worked alongside people that were as hardworking as I did, 
in the food okay. industry. You I got just want to say, right, thank you, you. Can stop this fucking burger flipping um, language when we talk about these issues because I think it's kind of um, disparaging, agree. dehumanizing, and uh, you know, you're one tragedy away from taking a job like that, and you never know. So anyways, I have. Thank you for having me on the panel. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Hutch, Twitter.com forward slash Hutchinson. I'm very tired tonight. I didn't speak very much, but I enjoyed the spirited conversation between you guys. That was very entertaining. So thank you. Wonderful. I'm going to throw it over to no comment shit next. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I mean, it's been a really fun night. I've loved talking to CBT here and getting to know the rest of the panel too. Um, I would say that, um, it's, I do take exception, you know, to some of our FDR fans here, and I'm not trying to at you too strongly here because I get it. I voted for Biden. I chose harm reduction. I was riding with Biden for this thing. But long term, we got to get behind a different plan because as strong as FDR's medicine was in the New Deal, it time proved it not to be strong enough every time we get like little crumbs they uh recuperate these crumbs from us and it gets taken back and we ended up in another gilded age like this and they and all the time they're gaining power and power and power if we get to this point where you know the singularity um hits and the um automation is just like overtaking everything and we're utterly useless to the capitalist class and they've got all the power we are fucked it's time that we start getting our eyes on the prize and taking the power back now that the election is won let's come Concentrate on pushing these goddamn cut Democrats to the left. I almost said right. I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama. Yeah, uh, we can do better than this. We can do better than um, than begging and simpering for people like Elon Musk and 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 retreading long debunked things about the about a minimum wage. We can do better than this, and we really should. Um, uh, thank you so much for having me on. My name is Demon Mama. You can find me on YouTube.com uh, forward slash C forward slash Demon Mama. You should come follow and, and subscribe to me. I have I promise you'll enjoy my content. After this, I'll be doing a Q&A and open for debate. So if any of you have a huge problem with what I said, come on over. I'd love to fight you. Um, anyway, uh, shoot me a follow. And uh, thanks for having me on, Dylan. Okay, I'm going to throw it over to Kaylee Nation. Thank you so much, Dylan Burns. This has been a marvelous time. And as I'm known to say around here, all that, that being said, this has been quite the evening. You can find me, Phil KOE, over at KOE Nation on YouTube. I also make appearances on the Dog and Chicken Show, the Tom Foolery Show, and Dad's Worldwide. But I don't before I let you go, there's something I want to Joy touch sense. on, folks. It's a little more personal. And since I have the platform and Thank I asked you, Dylan Wendley. if this was okay, um, you, I Lonnie. sent him a link to a GoFundMe uh, earlier. Uh, this week and a little bit in the last week, I found out that my eight-year-old nephew has been diagnosed with cancer. He has a very long fight ahead of him. He's going to be going through chemotherapy and radiation. You, and I would really appreciate, even if it's just thoughts and prayers, any kind of support you could send. But I also sent Dylan the link to the GoFundMe. Sure. If you'd Not be sure, so kind aesthetic. as to distribute Don't that complete. to people, Thank sir, you, Cyborg, you I will forever Thank be you. in your debts. And with all that being said, I yield back the balance of my time to the rest of you beautiful people. Okay, I'm gonna throw it now over to Trihex. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the uh, the link there. Uh, thank True you for Ellison. sharing that. I'll definitely uh, check it out and contribute when I when I get a chance. Um, yeah, no, th th thanks for having me on, Dill. It's been it's been, it's been fun. It's been chill. Um, in particular to this topic here, yeah, obviously I'm a uh, yeah I'm a fan of ha of not having a poverty and rich nation. I'm I'm the fan of like being able to have a majority of working class Americans feel respected, not be insulted with the stag stagnant starvation wages that are not sustainable majority of the of the major cities in this country if not all of them entirely here um i don't know i feel like i've kind of gone over all my shit here uh pretty hardcore um yeah uh if if y'all want to come check me out though obviously uh i will do some kind of like after party q a well i'll elaborate on my positions a lot more um if you guys want to challenge me further on that uh thanks for having me um the face of try hard uh so you can catch me on twitch.tv slash trihex and uh i'll see y'all after this there if you guys want to see me. Okay. And can I ask you a question, Trihex? Yeah, what's up? Do you think the rest of Twitch, gaming Twitch, uh, just normal just chatting Twitch should engage more with political Twitch? That's a good question, actually. The the, the situation there is most people, in my opinion, tune down on politics because they don't feel it really relates to them. Like, they don't understand, you know, legislation or Congress or the executive branch. They don't really understand like what's going on. That's it doesn't what make I'm sense to them. For. They don't feel represented, so they kind of usually tune out. Maybe. So you have to do a really good effort of like looping them into politics if you want to get them into debate rhetoric. 
uh, and making them feel like they actually fucking matter. So usually what I would do here comparatively, Dylan, is I always bring it back to the internet. Everyone who's a gamer or even a Twitcher knows it. their internet sucks because they have some kind of shit ass monopoly ISPs who's fucking them over endlessly. So if you if you loop them in with like, here's how politics can 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 finally stop this behemoth of of you know if you wanted like good fiber optic internet in your area and you don't want to have like one cheap provider overcharging you and underserving you, you so much, on Adam. comically pathetic speeds here, here's how you get them involved. So you, you got to like make it relatable. I would say that most people would be open yep. to that if you start That's with that doing, framing Cyborg. in mind and understand that they don't for. feel represented in politics. That's why they don't get, they don't get into it. Or they, they tune it out whenever uh, we're you, not doing you get all political. We're necessarily, but I will be open for debate. Even though everything's yeah. intrinsically political. As long as it's, it's kind of like, like, kind of like not really a direct answer for you, but it, it can they can engage if you make it engaging. It's my direct answer. That's what I do. It can be yeah. done. That's what Demon Mom is here done. for. Next is going to be over to Sheepdog. Hey. Hey. All right, so... uh. For everybody that assumed I was a Republican, I'm not a Republican. And uh, I, I don't need any clout, so I'm not going to shout myself out. I'm not married to any of my ideas. And uh, this panel tonight has uh, I learned a little bit from Demon Mama and the Connor over here. Um, I want to use this moment it's all to good. pass some it's sincere all good. love. This is not a joke. I'm not being a fucking asshole. Over to Demon Mama. Uh you shouldn't be so angry all the time. Be happy, right? And on these panels, be nice to the people that you're trying to convince of your ideas. You 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 convinced me a little bit, right? A little bit. You're a little bit mean and harsh to me and stuff. Okay, you hurt my feelings a little bit. But these panels, right? These are an exchange of ideas. Some of us are extremely different from one another. But if we're going to make real change in this country... We got to be kind to each other and embrace each other and be good. I love you, Demon Mama. I'm going to be nice to you even though you were mean to me. And uh, listen, hey, 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 I was going to send a microphone to KOE Nation, but if you need a new microphone, I'll send you one of these. I don't think I need a new just one. Just to be sweet here. to you. But thank you. And, uh, and just to listen, make you happy. Just, just, I just believe... to make you have one good day. If I could send you a mic and you have one good day. I promise I have many channel. good days, uh, but but I will say I think the kindest thing that you can ever do to uh, for someone is to set them on the correct path to a happier future. And uh, yeah, I'm so. happy. I drink lots of beer and eat edibles. <laughs> I want and you to be able, able to drink even more beer with your fifteen hours dollar week minimum wage. Still go fishing with my son. <laughs> We're gonna throw it now over to Connor points. So oh, it was. Um... Man, so I, I loved it. Sorry. My my name's Connor. I run a YouTube channel named CounterPoints. The best way to find me is literally go onto YouTube, type in CounterPoints, and uh, basically uh, scroll past Contra and two or three videos, and I'm right there. Um, also, you can find me on Twitter at CounterPoints, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S. In reference to this subject specifically, um, what I want to do is there, there are many things that I care about um, on the right that the left would openly reject me for. Um, I, am an uh, I am an apologist for uh, American international power. I'm an apologist for American imperialism. I'm a mixed economy capitalist. I'm extremely pro-gun. Um, I love That's conservatives, even social conservatives, who I have vehement disagreements with. I think that even if they have shitty takes that are infuriating to uh, lefties and progressives. Most of the conservatives I know are fundamentally good people who are trying to do the right thing. They're often just very religious. And as a result of their religion, they're uh, taking some hot takes that I think make other people feel like shit. I know that they're not gonna change their religious takes, but I do know that there's probably a way to communicate them to uh, slow them down a little bit. Um, so I'm a little bit of an enlightened centrist, a little bit center right, um, but I, I care. I care about Americans. I care about people in general. I want everybody to do well. I want the world to be better uh, when I'm gone. And that's part of what I try to do. However shittily is I try to make, I'm trying to make sure that by the time I'm fucking dead and gone, the world is a slightly better place. Um, and with that's that, fair. I had an that's excellent fair. time. Love you guys. Uh, however you want to take that. And I wish you an excellent evening. Okay, next and last but not least is going to be Critically Thinking Veteran. <clears throat> I appreciate that, Dylan. And as always, I appreciate the invite to the Hippie Dippy Podcast. 
honestly, the uh, last few months has been kind of crazy, right? But that being said, tomorrow I'm going to be on the Prime Royale, so make sure you guys come by at 8 p.m. to vote for me, right? As far as the minimum wage is concerned, I didn't hear anybody start to even begin to address what I said in the beginning where I pointed out the example of California where you want control of these things at the lowest level possible so that the, the constituents can be able to have the most control over it instead of it being a governmental body so far and away from the individual, right? Everybody else laid out some really great points as to nice why you should have one, right? We talked about sound money. We talked about, you know, workers' rights and all these different things. But at the end of the day, you're advocating at the wrong level, right? This shows a gross misunderstanding of civics and the way in which leveling forms of government work, right? So I just encourage you to keep trying to get things involved at your local, your state levels uh, for things that you want in your communities, right? Because the reality is, is that I understand where... People are coming on to the internet, and they're arguing with people all over the country, so then they feel like that everything has to be argued at the federal level, but in reality, there's a lot of stuff that you should yeah, be doing locally to enact the types of goods that you would like to see in your immediate society, right? And if everybody focused more on their local environment, you'd probably be able to impact much more good over the broader scale of the nation, right? Instead of only focusing on hypersensitive things that the news media decides to point out to people, which is where I feel like sometimes I'm not arguing with genuine people. I'm only arguing with news broadcasts that have all throughout the day. So with that being said, if you guys feel so inclined, you can find me over at my channel, twitch.tv slash critically thinking veteran. Uh, you'll find a whole host of very, very interesting and, and awesome people here in the Wolf Pack. Uh, Dylan Burns himself is a shaman wolf in the wolf pack. And uh, we expect and will have respect in our chat. We uh, we draw a pretty hard line when it comes to disrespect in all communities, right? The wolf and uh, anybody that wants to come down and have a good conversation about the topics of the day is more than welcome to. And we would love to have you. And as the shaman wolf of the wolf pack, I would like to call this... Uh hippy dippy round table to a close dylan can i shout out one thing before we dip everybody else can dip if they need to as so, long as you're telling dylan to grow a mustache and stop fucking dylan going. please grow a mustache but <laughs> tomorrow I, i'm gonna promote one of dylan's competitors but i think he's a friend um prime kai is uh basically uh prime kai on twitch is doing a royale style battle debate uh, I'm going to be on there. CTV is going to be on there. Right, so if you're unaware of who Pride Kai is, he is a host. He does uh, political debate stuff. Uh, Dylan Burns Remember, and him are best friends. We got more stuff to do after this. And they love promoting each other's channels in order to help each other grow. And that's why he's allowing me to say what I'm saying. So please come join us tomorrow night uh, in order to do that. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll talk off stream uh, about I that. mean, I, apparently the winner gets money, which isn't a belt. So whatever. But still, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, just not just without a belt. Anyway. Right. I appreciate you all coming by. You can all leave, uh, and I'm gonna raid. And if you're if you still wanna hang out here and chat, I'll be back in a few seconds. So, see y'all later. Bye guys. See you, Dylan. Right. Later. It was great talking Ooh. with you all. Bye. Yeah. Catch yeah. you. Oh, Lord. Yeah.